Hey Chattis what's up what if Naruto was became favorite Professor Beacon in RWBY special movie. Lunch period was always a refreshing occasion for the students of Beacon Academy, it gave them time to unwind and catch up with friends after going through the first half of the day. Aspiring hunters and huntresses enjoyed their short period together, some joked around with others, and some argued light-heartedly over random topics but despite all the sound they generated, filling the cafeteria, none were louder than the table where teams RWBY and SPNT sat. Do you wanna bet on that? A loud and unrestrained female voice could be heard over the combined noise of the cafeteria. To no one's surprise, the voice belonged to Nora, the orange-haired, hyperactive, hammer-wielding girl, who was currently standing and pointing, rather dramatically mind you, across the table at Yang who was looking back at her with a smug smile on her face. The reason for her yelling. Yang said that she could beat her in an arm wrestling contest and anyone that knew Nora knew that that was possibly one of the highest levels of insults you could give to the girl who prided herself on her gorilla-like strength. You know what, yeah. Let's do it, I bet 100 lean that it'll beat you right here, right now. Yang replied to Nora's challenge, shamelessly doing so knowing that she didn't have a dime to her name. Oh yeah, yeah, unless you're scared, Yang smirked. Nora's smile grew predatory upon hearing that, I am gonna make you regret saying that. While the two of them argued, the rest of the members of their teams watched on, either amused in Pira, Saffron, and Terra's case, or the opposite in Weiss and Blake's case. Ruby, on the other hand, unlike her usual loud and boisterous self, wasn't focused on what they were saying, she also wasn't touching her food, a surprise to Blake who was sitting beside her as she was usually the one who had to tell Ruby to slow down, today especially since dessert was cookies that she could only have after finishing her food. Lightly nudging her with her elbow, Blake got Ruby's attention. Hey, are you alright? She asked her quietly, at least she thought she did because the moment she finished talking, Nora's attention was no longer on her and Yang's competition but rather on what Shed just said. Huh, is something wrong with Ruby? Nora asked in a panic before it turned to morning once she saw that Ruby hadn't touched her food, I promise we won't forget you, Ruby. Your memory will live on. She sniffled while wiping a non-existent tear from her eye. Wah, no, I am not dying, I was just thinking about something, Ruby refuted Nora's outrageous deduction before her voice trailed off to a mumble as she realized the entire table was now focused on her. Well, Weiss spoke for the first time, her voice as haughty as it always was, are you going to share with us what you were thinking about or not? Uh, look, why don't we talk about something else? Ruby offered desperately, an awkward smile on her face as she tried to divert their attention to anything but her. Warning bells rang in Ruby's head when she saw her sister perk up and smirk as though something had come to her mind. Wait a minute, Yang started with a sly grin, is this what I think it is? When she saw that everyone was paying rapt attention to what she was saying, Yang continued, ignoring Ruby's pleading gaze. Were you thinking about Professor Naruto again? She teased, proving Ruby's earlier fears along with causing a massive blush to spread across her pale cheeks. Oh my gosh, you were. Yang exclaimed, I can't believe it, my baby sister is crushing on our hunk of a teach. Yang, shut up. Ruby whined, cutting the blonde off while her entire body grew hotter as her blush somehow got even more intense. To make things even worse, Yang only laughed at that while everyone at the table joined in alongside her. All Ruby could do was huff and look away from them. It's not her fault that she liked Professor Naruto, ever since had first complimented her skills with her scythe in his class, Shed fallen for him, the words he said to her that day still resonated deeply inside of her head and were one of the many things that kept her spirits up no matter what difficulty she encountered. Ruby, no matter what anyone says to you, just know this, I am extremely proud of you, even despite your lack of experience compared to your peers, you still managed to prove to everyone that you deserve to be where you currently are and should the day ever come that you were backed into a corner with no way out, I know that you will never give up until you find a way to succeed as that is just who you are. It might be insignificant to others, but to her, having someone of his skill praise her was something she would treasure forever, just thinking about the warm smile he always had and his bright blue eyes had her squirming in her seat. Ruby's thoughts were suddenly interrupted when Yang, who had somehow maneuvered so that she was sitting right next to her, hugged her and began rubbing her face against Ruby's. Ruby, Yang whined. I am sorry for teasing you about your crush on O. She yelped playfully when Ruby, annoyed at her sister's antics, pushed her off and into an unfortunate Weiss arms. The Ice Princess wasn't too keen on Yang's position either. Ah Yang, get off of me. Some people need to eat you know. Weiss scowled but failed to get Yang off of herself, the blonde girl's strong arms clinging to her like a child to their parent. 
That's how the rest of their lunch went, with random arguments about random things, Ruby daydreaming about Naruto, Pira, Blake, Tara, and Saffron quietly watching on, and Weiss being the annoyed heiress that she always was, throughout all of this, none of them noticed the look that Pira and Nora gave each other. Later that day, after classes had finished and everyone was back in their rooms, Ruby could be seen walking by herself. The reason she was alone instead of with the rest of her team wasn't that she was being an overachieving student and staying in class late. No, she'd fallen asleep in Professor Port's class and because her team, mainly Weiss, decided not to wake her up before the lesson finished, Ruby ended up having to stay back and listen to the portly professor's long-winded spiel about the meaning of being a huntress and how she had to remain vigilant no matter the situation. That wasn't enough for the man though as Ruby also had to listen to him bring up stories of his own valiance, the very reason she had fallen asleep in his class in the first place, telling her how in his youth he once took down an adult Beowulf with nothing but his bare hands, of course, like always, Ruby had a hard time believing even a smidgen of his story. So now here she was, with the sun lowering and the blue sky already changing to an orange hue as she made her way back to her team's dorm, Ruby wanted to do nothing more than lay in the comfort of her bed and fall straight to sleep now that she was free from Port's unending stories, her homework would have to wait until tomorrow because not even her legendary energy reserves could keep up with the unnecessary length of one of Port's tall tales. It seemed that that wouldn't be happening though, as her head tilted in curiosity when she heard the voices of Pira and Nora approaching her, while it wasn't unusual for Nora to be out and about, Pira being outside of her room this late was as uncommon of an occurrence as any. Quickly hiding, she waited with bated breath as they walked right past her, somehow so caught up in what they were talking to each other about that they didn't hear her, sadly, Ruby couldn't hear all of what they were saying because of how lowly they were talking, but much to her curiosity's sake, what she did manage to hear set her mind into a whirlwind. What are they going to see Professor Uzumaki this late for? Of course, knowing just who it was that they were going to be meeting with, Ruby couldn't help herself even if she tried. No way am I letting them get some secret training from Professor Naruto without me. She thought to herself, using her semblance to move swiftly but quietly behind them. Her pursuit continued for a couple more minutes before finally coming to a stop, Ruby was confused as instead of heading to the gymnasium if they were getting extra combat training, Nora and Pira had led her outside of the girl's dorm to a building on campus that she had never seen before, or rather, she had never noticed in the short time she'd been in Beacon, not to mention the extremely suspicious way Ruby watched them enter it. Before doing so, Pira had checked both ways, nearly catching Ruby who had hidden inside of a bush she still felt itchy, before entering through the front door with Nora following right behind her, it was as though what they were doing wasn't something they were supposed to be doing, Ruby's super fast analytical mind told her. The worst part of it all was that, because of their cautiousness, she couldn't even sneak into the building behind them since Pira locked the door behind her, that isn't to say that Ruby would have been stealthy enough to not be detected even if it wasn't, but that didn't matter, she wouldn't let that stop her impromptu investigation leaving before she found out what kind of activities her friends were doing that had them being so super secret would have kept her up all night. As luck would have it, after circling the building, she caught a glimpse of them through a window, ducking down and hiding while hoping they didn't see her, much like she did earlier, Ruby slowly peeked her head up past the windowsill in order to see what they were doing, luckily, because it was getting dark out, she blended in with the surroundings so even if someone had looked outside they wouldn't have been able to see her unless they had a fauna's night vision. The threat of discovery was the last thing on Ruby's mind though as she finally saw what Pira and Nora were doing inside the building, her silver eyes widened and her cheeks went completely red as she once again ducked down and hid from view, this time also using her semblance to run away, somehow forgetting the obvious trail of flower petals it always left behind her. A second later, Naruto opened the window and peeked out, his eyes narrowed as he scanned for someone peeping before they snapped to the flower petals on the ground and a smile grew on his face, closing the window and turning around he was instantly welcomed by two pairs of slender arms grasping his own. Did you see anything? Nora's bubbly voice sounded in his ear. Should we be worried? Pira's more mature voice asked him before he could reply to the first question. They were both confused when instead of telling them that they would have to be more cautious or something similar, Naruto only smiled at them, freed his arms from their grasp, and used his palms on both of their backs to lead them back to the bed. Don't worry girls, it was just an animal or something, he expertly waved away their worries, now then, I am sure you two aren't fully satisfied yet, right? Naruto asked, getting breathy moans of confirmation from both of them as they pressed their bodies against him. The next day arrived and Ruby could be seen walking around campus, her arms were crossed underneath her moderate bust and her face was set in a contemplative look that Shed had since waking up. 
Her mom was coming back from a mission that day that had her gone for the last week and a half but instead of the excitement that bit of news would usually bring, the young team leader's mind was too busy thinking of what she'd seen the previous night to focus on anything else. Her friends Nora and Pira were really doing that with Professor Naruto, there was no mistake about that, the question is, why were they doing that, and for how long? These thoughts ran through her mind, clouding her senses to the outside world, so when she turned around a corner, she wasn't prepared for a collision that sent her falling onto her ass, closing her eyes in pain as she hit the ground, she moaned pitifully as whatever she had crashed into felt like a brick wall. Oh my gosh, Ruby! A familiar voice rang in her ears. Looking up, what Ruby wasn't expecting to see was her mom's beaming smile as she stood beside her favorite professor, the very man she had just been thinking about, it seemed that the two of them were going somewhere, and with what she'd seen the night before, the aspiring huntress couldn't help but draw conclusions in her mind as to what they were going to be doing. Naturally, none of this was vocalized as if she were wrong there was no telling what the consequences would be, her mom alone would probably give her a ban on cookies and that may as well have been a death sentence for the pastry-addicted heroine. Her thoughts were interrupted, though, as Summer could no longer hold in her desire to hug her daughter, picking Ruby up off the ground as though she weighed nothing and squeezing her in her huntress career strengthened arms. Ruby. I missed you so much. Did you miss me? Did you miss your mom? I can't wait to tell you and Yang about my mission, it was so fun. Wait. Where is Yang? Is she not with you right now? Summer rapid-fired questions to her daughter. You are K. Mom. I can't breathe. Ruby gasped her pale face turning purple as she tried to free herself from her mother's Herculean grasp, some part of her wondered just where that strength came from, the woman was practically the same size as her. Eventually, Summer released Ruby from her hold, allowing the girl to take in mouthfuls of air as she leaned over with her hands on her knees. I thought I was gonna die. She gasped, Naruto laughed at that, obviously enjoying the sight of their unique relationship and that reminded Ruby of just where she was and who she was currently in front of. Professor Naruto she yelled while straightening up as best as she could, I am sorry for bumping into you, she apologized, getting that same warm smile from Naruto that always had her cheeks heating up. Hey now, there's no need to apologize, it was just as much my fault that we ended up hitting each other, and besides, accidents happen. With his reassurance given, Ruby felt her shoulders relax before she straightened up again, this time with a question that had been in her mind since she first saw the two of them together. So where were the two of you going? Team RWBY's leader felt her curiosity rise at the way her mother reacted to that question. A minor blush had spread across the older woman's cheeks that she tried to hide from Ruby by looking away in a way that wouldn't have been noticed if she wasn't looking for it, on the other hand from her mother, Professor Naruto remained the same as he had been, though there was a gleam in his eyes that Ruby couldn't identify that had the warm feeling inside her getting even more intense. We were just heading to my classroom because Summer said she had something she wanted to show me, isn't that right Summer? Naruto asked while looking at her mother with that same glint in his eyes. Why yes, that's right, Summer replied in a surprisingly shy way, anyways, Naruto and I have to get going or else it'll be too late, so I'll talk to you and Yang either later or tomorrow alright. If there was ever a time that Ruby felt like she was looking at something she should nt be, it would be at this exact moment in time, she was going to ignore the things she saw only yesterday for the moment. Ah okay then, bye. Ruby waved as she watched her mom cart off an amused Naruto with her arm around his. If that wasn't enough to confirm her suspicions of what they were going to be doing, the look Naruto sent her over his shoulder after he reached down and groped her mother's ass while she was still staring at them did, she didn't get the opportunity to call them out on it though as they turned the corner into another hall that led to the blonde instructor's classroom, office. Now, with the physical evidence right in front of her, there was no way Ruby couldn't justify her reason for following behind them, the thing was though, she wasn't ready for her suspicions to prove true, just like the night before, with the only difference being the location and who she was seeing with him, Ruby watched through a convenient crack in Professor Naruto's office door as her mom, the one who had raised her to be the young woman that she was, moaned like a whore as she got fucked from behind on top of her handsome teacher's couch. Apparently, they had been hasty to get started after Ruby had stopped them in the hall as the two of them were barely undressed while going at it, with her cloak on the floor in front of her, her dress bunched up around her hips, and her panties pulled down to her thighs, Summer looked nothing like the responsible woman Ruby had known all her life, instead, she resembled more of one of those streetwalkers she'd seen down in the shadier parts of Vale that she'd been to with her sister. Ruby bit down on her lower lip as she watched her mom's ass clap back against Naruto's hips. The blonde man using his hold on Summer's sides to bring her back into his powerful thrusts. 
she felt like she was watching something straight out of those dirty books that Blake reads, or even one of those mature videos Shed caught Yang watching a while back, it was all too much for the young woman and so she made to slowly back away so that she wasn't caught but as was normal for someone as clumsy as herself, she tripped on her own cloak and fell to the ground with a thud and a groan, the noise alerting the two inside who instantly were on alert. Oh, crap baskets, was the only thought Ruby had at her screw up, grasping the back of her head where she hit the floor with her eyes closed in pain, there was no way she was going to be able to get away like she did last time, especially not with her mother being one of the two inside, her semblance would instantly give her away to the older woman. It seemed that the decision wasn't up to her anyway though as just as she opened her eyes and started to stand up to make her escape, an ethereal chain burst through the door and grabbed Ruby by the hood of her cloak, lifting her up like a mother cat would her kitten and bringing her inside the office till she was being held in the air right in front of the two she had been spying on. Ruby blushed bright red at the sight that greeted her upon opening her eyes, Summer and Naruto obviously hadn't had the chance to put on their clothes upon hearing that someone had been spying on them and based on the teasing grins they were giving upon seeing just who it was, it seemed that they had no plans of doing so anytime soon, not till they were finished at least, Ruby even had a feeling that they were maybe even expecting her. That wasn't the issue at the moment though, she thought as her silver eyes were drawn to her not so secret crush's lower body trailing downwards until her eyes were tracing every square inch of his still hard and angrily throbbing cock due to being taken away from Summer's cunt before it reached release. Are you enjoying the view, dear? Ruby's gaze snapped from Naruto's engorged member to her mother's smiling face. Whu what? Confusion filled her as Naruto rested her on the ground in front of his desk, but as Summer approached her that quickly changed to apprehension, there were many reactions Ruby had been expecting now that she had been discovered. I asked if you were enjoying the view, you know, Summer moved closer till she was whispering in Ruby's ear, the view of your crush's hard and throbbing cock. This was not one of them, Ruby's eyes widened while she felt a throb in her lower abdomen as her mother's sultry whispering flipped a switch that she didn't know she had, shaking her head, she looked at her mom with wide silver eyes at just how lewd the woman was acting, the fact that she knew of her crush on Naruto didn't even matter to Ruby. You see Ruby, Naruto here isn't just a professor of beacon, no, he's so much more. Summer hugged Ruby's body into her side, directing the still heavily blushing girl towards the couch so that she was sitting beside her on the opposite side from Naruto. I think, that it's about time you got introduced to one of beacon's most well-kept secrets. Who secrets? Ruby got excited upon hearing that, what kind of secrets? Tell me tell me tell me. Alright, alright, just calm down first. Summer giggled at the sight of her daughter bouncing on the couch, once she saw that Ruby was no longer hyperactive, the woman began her explanation with a small sigh. Listen, Ruby, as I said, he's not just your combat instructor, though you may already know that based on what you saw yesterday and today, she revealed to Ruby's shock. Come on dear, Summer rubbed circles in her daughter's back, do you really think a semblance as distinct as yours wouldn't be discovered by someone as skilled as him? But that's beside the point. Naruto's been teaching at this academy since he was 15 when I was a student, it was then that our headmaster Salem decided, with his acceptance of course, that in order to help us huntresses better succeed, Naruto would be someone that we could go to for stress relief. Here Summer turned to Naruto who had been content with watching from the side. Of course, as most of us had major crushes on our handsome professor, she said, getting a cocky grin from Naruto, his services if you want to call them that were instantly in high demand. Moving her hand down to his lap, Summer grabbed his now half-hard member and slowly and sensually moved her hand up and down the length till it was back to full stiffness, Naruto moaned at the feel of her soft and warm palm stroking his dick, his form sinking back into the couch as he fully relaxed. And now as you've seen, they are still being used by both former and current students of Beacon, Summer, while still keeping her hand on Naruto's cock, leaned into a wide-eyed and captivated Ruby's ear and whispered her next sentences, you know, if you wanted, you could also be with him. I am sure that being a leader of a team is stressful right? I was one as well so don't worry, I completely understand. Ruby felt her body heating up at the images that popped up in her head upon hearing her mother's words. She found herself unconsciously replacing her mother with herself, a warmth spreading from her core to the rest of her body as she watched herself get fucked from behind in a third person kind of view, her red, lace panties that Yang had bought her against her wishes were slowly becoming a darker shade of red in the spot in front of her cunt as she embarrassingly realized that she was getting wet from arousal. Just think about it Ruby, her mom whispered one last thing into her ear, the older woman's breath caressing it and sending pleasurable shivers through her form, whenever you're ready, Summer then turned so that she was facing Naruto again who instantly brought her into a heated kiss, 
getting a gasp from the woman that turned into a needy moan as she kissed him back. Ruby squirmed in her seat as she watched Naruto wrap his arms around Summer and bring her into his lap, he was shameless in his groping of her mother's body right in front of her and her mother was no better. As the older of the two roses bumped and ground her crotch against Naruto's hardened length, Ruby realized that she really didn't know her mother as well as she thought she did, but as her heart raced and her mind began fogging with arousal the longer she watched the two of them go at it, the young team leader realized that maybe she didn't know herself that well either. It was one thing to peep in through the door, it was a whole nother thing being right there where the action took place. Resolving herself, Ruby scooted over towards them, the movement catching Naruto's attention as he separated himself from Summer's lips. I um, I also want to be with you Professor Naruto, Ruby said with a cute look of determination on her face, one that had her mother awing though she ignored the small warmth of embarrassment that filled her cheeks at that to continue staring into Naruto's eyes. Are you sure, he asked her, concern evident in his tone despite the determination he saw in her eyes, he didn't want her to do something shed regret later. How about this? Summer moved off Naruto's lap and kneeled beside him on the couch opposite where Ruby was seated before grinning cheekily up at him, why don't we both take you on? That is if you think you can handle us both. Raising a brow, Naruto responded to her obvious taunt, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you like it whenever I go rough on you, what with how many times you run that smart mouth of yours, Naruto responded with a raised brow sending his palm down onto Summer's bare ass, a loud smack resounding through the room as he slapped her round cheeks red. Fuuk, a long shuddering moan of delight left the woman's mouth, her lips parting and her head falling onto the blonde's lap right next to his raging hard on as her pussy spasmed violently from the burning sting she now felt in her butt, all of her previous attitude vanished after that, she was already aroused from when they were having sex before Ruby showed up, so this extra stimulation sent her mind into a frenzy. Yay, you like that. Naruto asked huskily, not waiting for her reply as he dragged his palm over her sore backside and dug his middle and ring finger into her gushing cunt. You gonna come in front of your daughter? That has to be a new low for you, don't you think? He mocked Summer, loud squelching sounds filling the office's air as he began pumping his fingers into her drenched cunt. Groaning and whining, Summer's body writhed while her face pressed into his thigh the woman's walls gripping onto his fingers and sucking them back in eagerly whenever he pushed them back in as though they were his dick, moving her face closer to his now diamond hard erection, she began laying wet kisses onto the base of his dick, her taste buds exploding and her eyes rolling into the back of her head as she tasted the lewd concoction of her juices and his precum that coated his member. This was normal by now for him in summer, what with her being the complete opposite of her battle-hardened self and falling into depravity as his submissive slut. The only thing missing was a certain red-eyed and stubborn to a fault woman that always helped him in dominating her team leader. For a wide-eyed and now also slightly panting Ruby on the other hand, she didn't know what to think as she looked on at the highly erotic sight, a full-body blush had taken over her normally pale skin as she listened to the lurid sounds coming from her mother's mouth and the soft yet powerful growl of Professor Naruto's voice that reverberated through her entire being. The subject of her thoughts noticed the look and smiled at her though she took no notice as she was otherwise distracted, with her lips parted slightly and her silver eyes unfocused and glossed over, Naruto could tell that Ruby was more aroused than she'd ever been, how could he not? He would have to be an idiot to miss it, especially when it was the same look her mother always had whenever she was on the brink of losing her mind, one that he was intimately familiar with, he thought cockily. Wrapping his arm around Ruby's side and pulling her till she was flush against him, Naruto ignored the small squeak of surprise she let out at the sudden shift in her position. I bet you never thought you'd see your mother like this, huh? Naruto joked with Ruby, leaning back and groaning as Summer expertly toyed with his cock. Though she was listening to him speak, Ruby still found her gaze rooted onto where her mother was lavishing Naruto's cock with her tongue, she was bathing his length in her saliva, licking up and down it so indecently that it made Ruby grow curious as to what made the act so enjoyable, she knew in some part of her mind that she should have been disgusted by such a sight, but instead all she felt was a lustful desire to sat her curiosity and there was only one way for her to do so. Licking her lips, she maneuvered herself out of Naruto's grasp before joining her mom in kneeling beside him. Pulling her dress up her hips so that it was out of the way and exposing her panty-clad bubble butt to the blonde's hungry blue eyes, she lowered her face till she was at eye level with his engorged member, now up close, Ruby felt it looked rather intimidating the immense heat radiating off of it warming her cheeks while the musky scent of summer's pussy juice and his pre cum oozing tip filled her nostrils and threw her head into a daze. Um, Ruby, are you gonna help me take care of this beast? Summer asked her daughter, 
a lewd smile on her face as she was too turned on to think properly. Instead of answering, Ruby decided to do as she usually did and used her actions to do the talking, lowering her head, she ignored her mother's surprised gasp and moved her head closer and closer to Naruto's cock till she felt her lips connect with it. It's so hot, was the first thing she noted, unlike hovering around it, Ruby felt like her lips were pressing against one of her mom's freshly baked cookies, however, rather than the usual open mouth breathing shed had to do in order to let her burnt tongue cool down, Ruby thought this heat was a pleasant one. Closing her eyes, she immersed herself in her task, doing her best to copy what Shed seen her mother doing in order to better please her groaning crush, Ruby even occasionally dipped down to kiss his crotch, her hands roaming underneath his shirt to brush against his chiseled abdomen while her mind grew fuzzier and fuzzier with each passing second as she inhaled his manly musk. Listening to Naruto's grunts and groans from her daughter's ministrations, Summer felt a smile grow on her face at just how well Ruby was doing for her first time. Even she had been hesitant in her movements when she had her first time with the blonde, Naruto must be noticed her reaction as she caught him smirking at her, his fingers still idly churning her insides and sending tingles up her spine. I guess today is just full of surprises for every Ufuic, he started to speak before gritting his teeth and moaning as Ruby dipped her head even further down before sucking and licking his aching balls. Shit. That's so good Ruby, Naruto moaned as his head once again fell back against the couch, his free hand coming up to cover his face. Ruby preened under his praise, somehow smiling despite the sordid act she was currently doing, she mentally thanked Yang and Blake as some of the things they showed her said that most men liked it when you played with their nuts and based on Naruto's reaction, they were very right. Shuddering through another climax of many as Naruto's increased the speed of his finger fucking of her vagina, Summer decided that her daughter needed help in bringing the blonde man to his own release, focusing her attention on his tip, she moaned as her taste buds were assaulted by the pungent flavor of his thick pre cum swallowing all that she could while bathing his cock with even more of her saliva. Naruto groaned from above them, the feeling of Summer's sloppy blowjob and Ruby's soft lips on his nuts causing him to have to actively do his best to not come, there was no way he was letting such a good thing end so soon. The two of them were driving him closer and closer to his peak before Ruby suddenly released his balls with a loud pop, getting a sigh of discontent from Naruto, that is until she moved up and joined her mother in pleasing his cock head directly not one to be selfish especially when it came to her daughter, Summer released his cock from her mouth with a sigh before gasping in surprise as Ruby engaged her in an incestuous makeout session with Naruto's tip remaining between their lips. Separating, the two of them traded places with Ruby now sucking on the head of his cock while Summer dipped down to pleasure his balls, it continued like this for the next five minutes, with them trading places every now and then until eventually, Naruto couldn't handle it anymore. Ripping his fingers out from Summer's cunt, he placed his hand on the back of her head to keep her on his cock while Ruby went back to feverishly slurping and lavishing his nuts with her mouth and tongue. Using his other hand, he ripped off the girl's dress in order to free her tits and grabbed handfuls of her chest, his fingers pinching and twisting her hardened nipples to her extreme pleasure. Meanwhile, Summer had begun deep-throating him, gagging as the head of his cock hit the back of her throat but never backing off as she heard his groans of pleasure above her. Soon enough, after the combined assault from both mother and daughter, Naruto could no longer hold back his orgasm. Girls I am about to come. He warned though instead of backing off, Summer only made enough space for Ruby to come back up so that the two of them could go even harder together, their tongues attacking the head of his cock in sync, coaxing him to his peak even faster than he already had been. Fuuk, here it comes. Naruto's eyes clenched shut as he felt himself explode. Summer and Ruby both moaned simultaneously as they felt his cock began to throb, with their mouths open and their tongues out, the mother-daughter duo were more than prepared for the release of his thick and hot semen that splattered down onto their faces, eagerly swallowing what landed in their mouths, they opened them as even more was shot into the air from his cock, only after what felt like forever but was actually just one minute, did Naruto's climax finally taper off. Sinking back into the couch, the now satisfied instructor watched through half-lidded eyes as the two of them gulped down the rest of his semen moaning wantonly as they scooped what they couldn't reach with their tongues off with their own fingers and sucked it into their mouths, the lewd sight had his softening member instantly regaining its previous rigidity and the two kneeling on either side of his lap did not miss that. Um, Summer moaned as she finished gulping down the last of his release that was in her mouth, the liquid heat traveling down her throat and into her belly, a pleasant warmth spreading throughout her body at the feeling. Ruby felt almost the exact same. The only difference was that since this was her first time ever experiencing such a euphoric feeling, it took her a bit more time to recover, though when she did, it was with a giddy smile as she realized that Naruto wasn't finished just yet. 
Standing up, Naruto looked down at both of their thirsty and impatient faces, a smile forming on his face as he thought of what he wanted to do with them next. Turn around so that your ass faces me, he commanded the pair and they instantly obeyed, turning around and arching their backs so that their near equally sized behinds were raised into the air for him to look at and enjoy. Taking in the view for only a moment, Naruto clapped both of hands down onto each of their respective backsides, pushing and pulling at their plump cheeks and exposing their dripping cunts to his hungry gaze once again. Listening to their moans of pleasure from his fondling, the blonde stopped abruptly, getting cries and whines of displeasure from them both. Why are you complaining when there's still plenty more to come? He asked them slyly, his tone of voice getting them to stop and look back over their shoulders at him, their silver eyes locking onto his turgid member. A pleased gleam appeared in Summer's eyes as she realized why he had stopped grabbing at their ass cheeks, it appeared that the time for playing around was over. Reaching back and gripping onto her cheeks, she pulled them apart herself, revealing her juicy lips and quivering hole as she prepared herself for what was to come. As she continued watching, Ruby felt a tinge of jealousy course through her being as she watched her mom get impaled by Naruto's cock, the older woman's mouth falling open into a silent scream as the blonde kept going until his crotch was pressed against her ass. Biting down on her lower lip, she watched as Summer slowly started to grind her butt against his hips, moans and groans leaving Naruto's mouth as he basked in the heat of her mother's cunt. Wet squelches and loud claps soon filled the room as Naruto pounded into her mom in a position she vaguely remembered from one of the many pornos Yang showed her called doggy style, because of their extensive foreplay, it was no challenge at all for him to give her everything, his balls slapping against the woman's soft yet muscular thighs while the tip of his cock repeatedly kissed the entrance to her womb. Ruby flinched ever so slightly every time her mom wailed to the high heavens whenever his hips collided with her newly reddening ass cheeks, from what she'd seen and from the little she knew, the younger Rose could confidently say that her mom was a masochist, not an extreme one, but the woman still got off to pain all the same, she on the other hand thought that the rough yet not so violent love making that Shed read about in Blake's books was much more suited to her tastes. Um godses. Fuck me. Her thoughts paused as her mother let loose a loud moan of pleasure. Summer's head was now pressed against the back cushion of the couch, a lewd smile on her face as her body bounced with each impact of Naruto's hips against her cushiony ass. Angling his hips a certain way, Naruto directly attacked her G-spot over and over again, sending mind-numbing waves of pleasure throughout the woman's body as her lower body jumped and jerked from the inexplicable ecstasy. Oh foo coming. I am coming GG. Summer squealed, her voice muffled as her face was now fully pressed against the couch cushion. Using her hands to better brace herself against the blonde's brutal onslaught as her cunt clenched around his tool, she cried out as instead of letting it affect him. Naruto simply picked up the pace even further, fucking her through her orgasm, his harsh thrusts had her eyes rolling into the back of her skull and her eyelids fluttering closed, blissful unconsciousness soon took over Summer's mind as to keep her safe from the overload of pleasure. Naruto groaned, pulling his cock free from her still clenching hole with an obscene squelch, guess that was too much even for her, he said while driving one last loud slap onto Summer's ass, a pathetic and drawn out moan leaving the comatose woman's lips. Watching as her mom slowly sunk into the couch, Ruby let loose an embarrassing squeak as Naruto's attention then turned to her, his throbbing erection pointing directly at her. Do you still want to continue after that? He asked her once again, the last thing he wanted was for her to feel that she was forced to participate. Ruby's only reply, however, was to assume the position she'd previously been in so that now her front was facing him instead of her ass. I want to be able to, you know, see you as we do it, I if that's fine with you. Ruby trailed off, her cheeks coloring while she looked down at her lap. Naruto just chuckled at her embarrassment, further inflaming her face at what she thought was him making fun of her, that is until he used his hand to tilt her chin up so that she was looking him in the eyes. So long as you're comfortable, Naruto reassured her, his voice just as kind as always. Smiling up at him at his response, Ruby raised her arms around his neck and pulled him down so that he was leaning over her his larger body encasing her own and drawing a breathy gasp from her partially opened mouth as the head of his cock brushed against her sensitive folds. Despite her outward appearance of confidence, Ruby couldn't help the bit of apprehension that filled her being as she felt the smoldering heat of his cock settle upon her outer labia, thankfully, showcasing one of the many reasons that she loved him, Naruto could sense that and waited till she gave him a signal that she was ready to continue. Once she did so, he dragged his hips back till only the head of his cock lay against her entrance and placed his hands by the sides of her head to brace himself, at that, Ruby moved her head till she was rubbing her cheek against his palm, taking comfort in the warmth of his palm that helped further relax her for what was to come. 
This is probably gonna hurt, so just tell me if you want me to stop, alright? Ruby only nodded again, not trusting her voice as it may give away the nervousness that she still felt and make Naruto not continue because of his concern for her. Truly, she loved that he was so considerate for her comfort, but there was no way the caped side wielder was going to let her fear stop her from being with the man she's had a crush on for almost as long as she's been in Beacon. With her go ahead given, Naruto flexed his hips and began the slow process of sliding his dick into her virgin tunnel. Gritting his teeth at the tightness, he carefully inched forward, burying centimeter after centimeter of his hardened length into her. Luckily for Ruby, her time training to become a huntress had already torn her hymen so that was one thing they didn't have to worry about, unluckily though, despite not having to worry about the pain that came with tearing it, she still winced occasionally from the pain of her walls being stretched out around Naruto's immense girth, still, she made sure to let Naruto know that she was fine to continue as by then he had already gotten himself halfway inside of her. Fuck Ruby, you're so tight, he groaned while clenching his jaw, sweat dripping down his front and soaking into his white undershirt as he fought against the bruising grip she had on his tool. Ninhu you're just too big, Ruby whined in reply, her hands gripping the couch cushion for some kind of support. Eventually, after many minutes of slow progress, the two of them finally got the chance to take a breather as Naruto's crotch connected with her own. Um, you're stretching me out so much, Ruby breathed out while closing her eyes, a thin layer of sweat coating her form. She felt completely stuffed, and not the kind of stuff that comes with eating an entire tray of cookies, no, this was a kind of stuff that had her feeling much more satisfied than cookies ever could no matter how impossible that sounded, with Naruto's cock embedded inside of her actively spasming walls. Ruby felt like something she had been missing was once again within her and she didn't know if she would ever be complete again without it. Looking up at him, she smiled at the blissful look that was on his face. Although it was her first time, Ruby still felt the instinctive happiness that came with knowing she was also making her partner feel a significant amount of pleasure, but now that the pain had left and only a satisfied contentment filled her mind, her only desire was to continue falling deeper into their act of debauchery, just before she could say anything though. The silver eyed girl found her head falling back as untold amounts of pleasure racked her body. The source of the said pleasure was from Naruto himself. Once again, proving to her just how good of a lover he was. Ruby moaned pitifully as he withdrew his dick from her depths. His immense girth scraping against her walls and causing her to try and wrap her legs around his hips to keep him inside. Not letting it bother him, the blonde continued to pull out until only the head remained, before just as slowly, pushing himself back inside until the tip of his cock kissed the entrance to her womb, his reward was a pussy spasming shudder from the girl that drew a long and throaty groan from his mouth, steadily repeating this again and again, he and Ruby moaned in sync at the liquid ecstasy the feelings sent straight to their brains. Yes. Ooh, this is so good, Ruby cried out, her smaller body rocking back and forth beneath Naruto's as he picked up speed. Despite being nowhere near as harsh as how had been with her mother. Ruby could still see stars in her vision every time his balls slapped against her ass cheeks, slowly turning them a cherry red color while his cock repeatedly hilted inside of her tight cunt, the feeling of his girthy length filling her up and then leaving her empty, only to then repeat the same cycle was both extremely pleasurable and insanely addicting. Her moaning was silenced and an excited squeak sounded in her mouth as Naruto closed the minuscule distance between them and captured her lips in a fierce kiss, joy exploded in her heart as she experienced her first kiss with the man she loved doing her best to keep up with his experienced lips while purposely ignoring how only minutes earlier she'd technically given her first to the thing that was currently conquering her pussy as its own, there was no way that counted. Moans and groans occasionally escaped their connection as their crotches continuously met, wet slaps once again filling the office as the blonde gave Ruby everything and more for their first time together. Naruto growled at the tightness of her shuddering cunt biting down on the inside of his cheek as the blissful sensations went straight to his aching balls and sent waves of euphoria straight to his brain, where summers had been nice and snug, like a velvet glove surrounding his length in its warm embrace, Ruby's was a vice grip, the combination of both tightness and the blistering heat that her tunnel exuded driving him closer and closer to an explosive release. A particularly harsh thrust from Naruto where his dick scraped against her G-spot caused Ruby's cunt to clench harshly around his member and her mouth to fall open a sudden orgasm rocking her system and sending lightning hot ecstasy straight to her brain. Ooh, I am coming. Ruby moaned, her head falling back against the couch while her body jerked and spasmed underneath him. Her vision was swimming, her mind was foggy, and her eyelids were fluttering as she experienced the massive onslaught of pleasure that came with her first orgasm, at least one that wasn't caused by her own hand. Reaching around blindly for something to hold onto, 
Ruby's hands gripped onto his muscular arms with a surprising amount of strength, it was to the point that he was certain that if it wasn't for his aura, her nails would have been piercing into his skin. Oh Fuuk, me too. Here it comes. Naruto bit out, the contraction of her walls practically milking the load from his balls. Pushing his hips forward until their crotches were grinding against one another's, the blonde let loose the cum head had building up since he first started fucking Summer with a throaty groan. Instantly, relief filled his body, his hips jerking and his tense muscles relaxing as he emptied himself completely inside of Ruby's waiting womb. So much, she moaned as Naruto's thick and steaming baby batter filled her up to bursting. Eventually, however, his release tapered off until all that remained was Ruby's still uncontrollably clenching cunt. Soon though, even that gradually abated as the jolts that surged throughout her body from her orgasm and the feeling of her crush professor stuffing her full of his seed ceased, only leaving behind the two who felt like they were currently floating above the clouds after that experience. MMMWAAHH, Ruby sighed blissfully, her shaky vision focusing on the cause of her overwhelming pleasure. The first thing she noticed was Naruto's smiling visage, the warmth in his sky blue orbs causing her to match his grin despite the days her mind was still in. How was that? He asked as though he didn't know the answer to that question already, did I help in alleviating some of your stress? Ruby let out a puff of air at that, her nose curling as she tried to hide her amusement by burying her face in his chest. Sadly, her attempt didn't account for the fact that he could still feel her shoulders practically vibrating as she held back her giggles, she yelped though, as two slender arms wrapped around her side and intruded on her and Naruto's close proximity only relaxing when she heard the familiar sound of her mother's voice, the woman Haven awoken some time ago to the sight of the two of them rutting like animals in heat. Hey now, it's not over yet, Summer said in an exhausted yet still obviously aroused tone of voice, pointing her chin in Naruto's direction, she brought Ruby's gaze to the mon's still towering erection. Professor Naruto here is never satisfied after just one orgasm, and last I checked, I didn't teach you to be so selfish as to ignore the needs of others, right? Summer asked rather slyly. All right, Ruby replied while looking at Naruto in apprehensive awe, apprehensive because she didn't know if her sensitive vagina could even handle another round with her well-endowed combat arts instructor. With her head resting on her daughter's shoulder, Summer licked her lips as Naruto finally decided to take off his shirt, exposing his chiseled upper body for the first time that day. Well, let's not waste any more time then, she said before releasing her hold on Ruby and pouncing into his arms. And besides, Summer looked back at Ruby teasingly, if you don't want to continue, that just means more of his attention for me, so who am I to complain? With her piece said, the Rose Woman turned back to Naruto who was looking at her in amusement at her obvious ploy, it was like everything she did had to be some sort of game or else she wouldn't be able to rest easy. Said ploy became apparent when Ruby, with the same determined look that she had earlier, dragged him onto the couch beside her and away from her mother's grasp, she missed the grin that Summer sent her way as she moved into his lap unknowingly following exactly what her mother wanted her to do. Ruby wasn't focused on any of that anymore though as she came face to face with Naruto, all she wanted was to please her favorite professor, already forgetting the words her mother said as she grabbed his face to hold him still. Kissing him, she let out a pleased hum as the blonde happily returned her fervor twofold. Reigniting their earlier passion and starting round two of the many that would come that night. It was only when the sun started rising and the birds began chirping that Ruby would finally exit Naruto's office alongside her mother, their bodies sore yet satisfied after a long night of steamy lovemaking, adorning them, were new pairs of identical clothing that the blonde had in his office provided by headmistress Salem for the exact situation that they were in, what with how he tore off their former pairs last night. Well you should head back to your dorm now, I don't know about you but I am passing out as soon as I can after that, Summer said to Ruby, yawning while stretching her arms to the ceiling. She winced though at the slight ache she felt in her muscles from the movement. Yeah, Ruby sighed tiredly, that was exhausting, bye mom. Bye dear. Summer called out to her slowly retreating daughter, she had to hold back a giggle though after seeing the slight limp that she was trying to hide. Turning to head down the hall towards where her quarters lay, Summer had but one thought, I hope you'll be ready soon, Ruby, to experience with me even more of what Beacon's favorite professor know, what Naruto has to offer for us. In Team RWBY's dorm, late at night when they were all preparing to head to bed, Weiss voiced her concerns to Blake and Yang about their team's leader, at the moment, it was just the three of them as Ruby was still in the bathroom taking a shower, the sound stopping any possibility of her overhearing their conversation. Blake and Yang shared a look at her question before the more outgoing of the two spoke up. You're probably just thinking too hard about it Weiss, my little sis is spending time with her crush, 
Of course she would be out more, Yang said, hoping her prim and proper teammate wouldn't ask any more questions about her sister's late night ongoings. Yay, Weiss, you're more than likely worrying over nothing, Blake threw in her own two cents, her cat ears twitching. Hum, that's certainly possible, Weiss looked contemplative at that, tapping her pointer finger to her chin as she closed her eyes, but something feels odd about it. She couldn't put her finger on it, but there was definitely something going on between Ruby and their blonde professor, her two teammates' terrible attempts at pulling her from her suspicions only strengthened them, not to mention also adding them to the now list of four people she would have to keep her eyes on. It seems like it's time for me to conduct a private investigation. Opening her eyes imperceptibly, Weiss watched as the two of them spoke to each other through lip reading, what they were saying, she couldn't pick up, but what she did know was that they were frantic about it. You know what, maybe you two are right, and I am just looking for something that doesn't exist, Weiss sighed and fell back against her bed, holding back any amusement she felt at Blake and Yang suddenly clamping up when she did so. Were they even trying to hide whatever it was that they were at this point, even now, she could hear them whispering about whether or not she was onto them, it was as though they wanted her to find out or something. But that couldn't be it, right? Shaking her head, Weiss decided that whatever the case may be, she would find out what it was that both Ruby and her two teammates were keeping from her, if she couldn't, she didn't deserve to call herself a schnee. Roaming the halls of Beacon much like the one she was tracking once did, Weiss watched as both Ruby and Professor Uzumaki conversed with one another about something that had the Rose Girl giddy with excitement. Probably weapons if I had to guess, Weiss thought to herself tiredly, would it hurt Ruby to show even a little bit of that passion in her studies? If she did, maybe she wouldn't need to bother her for help the day before tests anymore. Anyways, ignoring her annoyance at her team leader's lack of care for anything academic, Weiss had been on the case so to speak for the better part of two hours and her patience at finding any evidence of wrongdoing was quickly waning. Ruby had shown Professor Naruto some moves of hers that she needed help with, though that wasn't surprising seeing as Weiss knew her teammate was always trying to make sure that she was worthy to continue being their leader, he helped her fix what needed correction, they went to the cafeteria where they talked about what she needed to work on. That then all led to where she was now, trailing behind them like some stalking ex-lover. All in all, the Schnee heiress felt like Shed just wasted her time chasing things that don't exist when she could have been using that time for better things, everything that the two of them had been doing were things she could have guessed without needing to follow them. Now, watching them head back to Naruto's classroom, Weiss felt silly from all the assumptions Shed made without any real evidence to base them on, so after a bit of contemplation she decided it was time to head back to their dorm. If only she had continued watching them a bit longer, maybe she would have seen something interesting. A couple hours later, seated at her personal desk in Team RWBY's dorm, Weiss could be found going over the material they had gotten in classes that day, her team had left some time ago to do whatever, leaving her alone as she tried to get her work done. Even with the exhaustion she felt from going on that goose chase trying to find out what sort of nefarious activities Ruby was conducting, she still had her status as Beacon's top first year in academics to uphold, not to mention her being the Schnee heiress. It wouldn't do for one such as her to be anything less than perfect. Still, I can't shake the feeling that I've missed something vital, Weiss thought in terms of her investigation, her assumptions were rarely wrong, and that wasn't her arrogance speaking. Shaking herself from her thoughts, however, she redoubled her focus on the books and papers in front of her. I will not let that buffoon distract me from my studies. As though the world could hear her and wanted to do everything but let her be responsible, a new distraction plagued her, only this one was much more bothersome than her thoughts of what Ruby was up to. Something was vibrating, and it had already been doing so for about a minute before Weiss felt her anger reach its peak. I swear, if Yang forgot her scroll again, she growled before slamming her pencil onto her desk and standing up with a scowl on her face. Moving to where the sound was coming from, though, Weiss's furious expression slowly melted away to one of confusion plus minor annoyance when she realized it was actually Ruby's bed that it was coming from. A look under the girl's pillow and the heiress was greeted to the sight of her team leader's scroll vibrating as a call from her mother came through. Now Weiss wasn't one to invade others' privacy, okay maybe she was, but with the thoughts and questions in her head and the phone with possible answers to said questions laying right in front of her, she couldn't help but take a look. Let's see here, picking up the phone as it stopped vibrating and unlocking it with zero effort, Weiss mentally chastised Ruby as Shed told her to add some form of security to it only the day before. Well whatever, just makes this easier for me, she mentally shrugged. Scrolling through Ruby's messages first, 
deciding it would be the prime place for any incriminating evidence. Weiss wondered if she'd been too suspicious of her friend when all she found were innocent messages between her and her family and friends, even checking the trash in case she thought all she had to do was delete the messages and they would be gone proved to be pointless. All the guilt she felt building up, however, was forgotten when a notification from a website called Beacon's Favorite Professor popped up, causing her eyebrows to raise. The most interesting part of it, was the fact that right beside those three words, written after a single dash, was her family's last name, before she could delve further into her newly revived investigation though, the sounds of her teammates in the hallways after coming back from wherever they went sent her into a minor panic, for what reason? Weiss did not know. So after sending the link to the website to her own scroll and deleting the message permanently, she hastily placed Ruby's phone underneath her pillow where it was before running back to her desk, just in time too, as the door to their dorm opened the minute she picked back up her pencil. Oh my gosh, Weiss, are you still doing school work? Yang was the first to call out to her. HMPH, yes Yang, I am, some of us do have standards we wish to uphold, you know. Weiss mentally thanked the blonde brawler for the distraction, masking her nervousness with her normal arrogance was much easier than she thought when she was having her usual back and forth with her teammates. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say princess, Yang waved her off before sprinting to the bathroom, I call the first shower. Yang, Ruby yelled out at her sister, hitting her fists against the bathroom door when she closed and locked it behind her, we all agreed that I could take the first bath today. Watching Yang and Ruby's sibling quarrel, Weiss had but one thought, certainly, whatever that website was, Ruby couldn't be involved in it, right? That night, while her teammates were sleeping, Weiss was up and looking at her phone. On the screen, her finger hovered over the link to the website that she'd sent herself from Ruby's phone. What could my family have to do with this? Weiss's heart raced at the multitude of possibilities that could occur when she clicked on it. Taking a deep breath to calm herself down, she realized that there was only one way to find out what the answer to that question was, for all Weiss knew it could be a virus meant to lure her in before taking some sort of malicious action against her. Unfortunately, she was far too curious to let such dangers keep her from continuing on, so resolving herself to do what she needed, the Schnee heiress clicked the link to see just where it led. Once she did so, however, and the website finally loaded, a quiet gasp escaped her lips, her breathing quickened once more, and her eyes widened until they couldn't open any further from what greeted her. All right class, that's all for today, make sure to go over your tests from last week and focus on improving on any significant weaknesses you may find, Naruto said, leaning back against his desk and looking at all his students who were walking past him to his class exit, also don't stress yourself out by going over everything at once. Take your time. Um, Professor Naruto, a voice to his left caught his attention, when he looked, he saw that it belonged to Weiss, arguably one of his best students, it was because of that, that he felt his curiosity grow on what she could need from him when he saw the unsure expression on his face. What's up? Naruto asked simply, Weiss fidgeted underneath her professor's gaze, she had told her team to go on ahead without her and they'd done so without question, but now that she was alone with the man, a small bit of herself had wished she'd gone with them, how could she bring up what she had seen? Two weeks had passed since she clicked on that link, and it had been two weeks of complete mental torture, somehow, Shed kept her grades up during that time, but there wasn't a doubt in her mind that Naruto hadn't noticed her constant glances and embarrassed flushes whenever he looked at her in class. May we talk in your office? It's about something private. Yeah, of course, Naruto smiled and stood up before motioning for Weiss to follow him. She was right, Naruto had noticed the glances she had been giving him in class, the only thing was, he didn't know the exact reason why she was giving him them. Though he did have a good idea, it was only because whatever it was hadn't affected her academic performance that he hadn't pulled her to the side earlier. Now though, with her in his office, Naruto knew that the most opportune time to figure out just what had been bothering her and what it had to do with him was now. So what's going on? Is everything okay? Naruto asked with his kind smile still in place. He was seated on top of his desk now, reminding Weiss of how much a laid-back professor he was in comparison to his colleagues that plus the smile on his face that she had been seeing in more than just the classroom, did wonders in helping her calm down enough to actually go through with what she had already planned on saying. Clearing her throat, Naruto was mildly surprised when Weiss's attitude took a swift 180 degree turn, now, in the place of the meek and unsure girl he saw in his class stood a young woman who was as stern and strict as a top general, then there was her voice, it was as cold as the hieroglyphs that her family was known for. Am I okay? 
Professor Naruto. Because from where I stand, you seem to be getting on perfectly well. What do you mean? He asked with his smile still up. Bringing up her scroll, Weiss quickly navigated through it, going to her videos folder where everything that she saw on the website was downloaded to a short scroll and a click later, and she held the device up for Naruto to see as a video began to play. Oh fuck, fuck me, Naruto, I love you so much darling. He watched, doing his best to not let his smile turn into a smirk as on the screen a video of him absolutely destroying the Shni matriarch, Willow Shni, played at almost max volume. He couldn't help the chuckle that escaped him though when Weiss blushed bright red and panicked as she hastily lowered the volume. That that's not all of it, she stuttered, her blush still intact, as she brought her scroll back to go to the next video. Oh my goodness professor, you're so big. This time she showed him a video of him and her sister, Winter, he could recall that moment with crystal clear accuracy, Atlas and Beacon were having a semester long exchange program, and as the top of her class, Winter was chosen to represent her school. What she didn't know then, was that she would soon unravel, much like her sister was now, one of Beacon's most closely guarded secrets. Even if he closed his eyes, Naruto still could recall every detail and expression the older Shni sister made as she shyly yet happily stroked his cock. It's gotta be a thing with the woman in their family to be sexuality incarnate, just the thought of what had done with the two Shni women in the past had Naruto's cock stiffening in his pants. After that, and despite the massive full-body blush Weiss now had, she continued showing him video after video after video of his past escapades with students, parents, faculty and anything she could find on the site that she thought would cause him to lose his cool. She showed him a video of him and Glinda fucking in the library, the blonde woman showing none of her usual stern attitude as she moaned his name irregardless of anyone that might hear her. She showed him a video of him, Pira and Nora in Team SPNT's dorm with the hammer-loving girl sucking his dick while her red-headed teammate offered her breasts for him to play with. For her final piece of evidence against him, Weiss showed him a video of one of his greatest memories, both her mother and sister, kneeling in front of him with their bountiful breasts pressed together as they sandwiched his cock between them, they lavished it with their tongues, uncaring if they touched the others until finally they were rewarded with his seed. Once the video stopped playing, Naruto looked at Weiss and smirked, she was doing her best to look at him sternly but the blush that permanently remained on her face and her glances towards his crotch only broadened the grin he already had. Is there something you want to say to me, Weiss, or was that all? Naruto asked, pushing off from his desk so that he was now standing up in front of her, he laughed at the angry pout that formed on her face from his words. Is that all, you obscene, perverted bastard? Have you no shame for what you've done? Weiss fumed, how could he take this all so lightly? Do you even know what could happen to you because of your debauched actions with two women of such high status? Casually ignoring her poorly hidden threat, Naruto perked up as something came to his mind, wait, is that why you've been so out of it in my classes lately? It would certainly explain the constant blushes and strange looks Shed been giving him. What? No, of course not, Weiss blushed, realizing what he meant. You sure? I bet you used those videos at least, I am gonna say, three times this week, Naruto smirked at her, he didn't even need to press any further, seeing as her reaction gave him everything he needed, but he couldn't fight the urge even if he wanted to and you called me obscene. He tutted mockingly as she stuttered out excuses, masturbating to your own mother and sister being fucked into comas, I wonder how they'd react if I told them this, they would more than likely be thrilled to hear it and wonder if she was going to join them but Weiss didn't need to know that, he didn't think she could handle that knowledge on top of what they'd already been involved in. Well, whatever, believe what you want, but I also have something to ask. She yelled at Naruto who shrugged and motioned for her to go on. In the videos, when my mom and sister were doing, that, with you, they called you names like Master, Darling, and, Weiss hesitated to say the last bit, Daddy. As much as it pains me to ask, I just have to know, she looked up at Naruto with an unsure but serious expression as he looked down at her with one filled with curiosity, the dates are far too close to be coincidental, so with that taken into consideration, are you, Winter and his father? Naruto was honestly gobsmacked though he hid it well. Of all the things he expected her to ask him, whether or not he was her dad was not one of them, but instead of clearing up the misunderstanding, the blonde decided to do a bit of teasing, why not have fun with it while he could, was his thought. Why? What would you do if I was your, as you said they called me, daddy? He asked her playfully and laughed when she looked away from him, embarrassed. Just like her mother, Naruto thought fondly before sighing, deciding to be serious for a bit, 
he didn't want to tease her too much and have her become truly upset with him now, that would be far too troublesome. Listen, Weiss, I am not your father, she looked up at him again from his sudden declaration. First off, we look nothing alike besides maybe the color of your eyes but your dad also has blue eyes so that's not good enough, second off, your mother and I were always careful so there's no way anything could have happened there, and finally, your sister was just kinky like that, if you want to know why she called me that, ask her, Naruto finished with a small shrug, it wasn't his problem what kind of fetishes the women he fucked had so long as they weren't harmful to either party. Still, he was glad to see that what he said seemed to appease the Shni heiress, that is, until she registered the last part. Ho oh, how, how dare you say that about my sister? Weiss yelled, affronted as she began pacing in front of him, not only do you do such despicable things to the innocent students, parents, and teachers of this school, Naruto snorted and repeated innocent mockingly, getting her to glare at him that he ignored, but you also had the audacity to lay your filthy hands on my sister and mother too. I know I said this earlier, but do you feel no shame for your actions? It's like you don't even understand the fact that you were an instructor at one of the most prestigious academies in the world. While he listened to Weiss rant as she began telling him what his responsibilities were as a professor at Beacon, Naruto found himself growing increasingly bored as time passed, he had answered her question, what more did she want? A full-blown apology, picking his ear in annoyance once she'd gone on for more than two minutes non-stop, he finally spoke up and cut her off. Are you done? When all Weiss said in reply was no before she started up once more, Naruto sighed and ran his hand through his hair. Weiss, he called her name, cutting her off and making her frown at him. What? She spat back at him, have you finally realized the error of your ways and have decided to resign from your position? If not, then do not speak to M. Come here, Naruto beckoned her closer, nodding his head to the spot right in front of him, his tone wasn't commanding, it wasn't even loud, spoken merely in a voice he would use in everyday conversation, and yet something inside Weiss reacted to it all the same. And why in this clearly godforsaken world would I do that? I bet you just want me closer so that you can get your filthy hands on me as well, were my mother and sister not enough for you? Weiss said with a sneer while holding her head up high, but even as she said that, the small blush on her pale cheeks and the way she still let her feet carry her across the small distance until she stood face to chest with her suddenly imposing professor was all Naruto needed to know where it was that she actually stood. If anyone asked her though, Weiss would argue that it wasn't because she wanted anything to happen, she was just doing as any good student would and was listening to her professor's instructions, yes, if there was anyone to blame for any of her actions, it was the blonde man in front of her who couldn't keep it in his pants when it came to her friends and family. Naruto's arms were crossed as he looked down at the Shni heiress haughty form, now while it wasn't a lie to say that he loved a woman with wide hips and big breasts, as Weiss' mother could attest, it would be a lie to say that Naruto couldn't also appreciate those whose body came from the hard effort and training it took to be a huntress, there was just something about strong women that always had his heart. So with her hands on her hips and her head tilted to the side so that she was facing away from him, the blonde couldn't wait to get the ball rolling. Good, now get on your knees. HMPH, I can't believe I've been in the same room as the man who defiled my mother and sister for the past who knows how long. Weiss kept the petulant glare she had on her face upon hearing Naruto's instruction, she knew where this was going, it wasn't like he was hiding his intentions from her, but even as her brain told her one thing, her body was already doing another. Now, however, with her knees resting on the surprisingly comfortable carpet ground, Weiss was going to make sure she let the blonde professor know just what she thought of his perverse actions, that is, until the sound of a zipper being undone reached her ears. Huh, what are you? Wide-eyed and with her cheeks burning red as she realized what was happening, Weiss could only mutter out a few quiet words before her life was changed forever. A loud slap followed by her gasp of astonishment and Naruto's condescending laughter was all that could be heard in his office for the next few seconds. Looking down, his eyes sparkled with amusement as he watched Weiss try and fail to say something about her predicament, what was that predicament you might ask? Well, it seemed that the solution to shutting her up was to slap his throbbing hard cock against her face. Naruto smirked and moved his hips back and forth, dragging his cock along the Shni heiress' pristine face as he smirked down at her. Did that finally shut you up? Naruto asked when he was met with silence instead of her annoying and unneeded scolding. Uh, was Weiss' only response, her brain overloaded as she was hit with the classic cock shock anyone who wasn't used to him experienced during their first time together. Yay, that's pretty much what I expected, Naruto nodded like it was an everyday thing, it's like all you Shni women are the same. Your sister, 
your mother, and now you. All I have to do is pull my cock out and you turn to mush, but I am sure you already knew that, you know, after watching all those videos and all. And true to his words Weiss was losing herself very quickly, with one of her bright blue eyes shadowed lewdly by his cock and her lips dragging against the underside of his length as he unconsciously moved his hips, her mind was slowly being filled with nothing but the image and smell of Naruto's huge dick. Still, I can't believe one of my girls would be so careless, he looked down once again at Weiss, do you remember who it was you got those videos from? Naruto asked, but sighed and massaged his forehead when he saw how dazed she was already, I really should have asked before starting, but oh well, once I find out who it was though, I am going to have to scold them properly before they do something even more detrimental, I am sure you can tell what that means, right? Grabbing his cock by the base, Naruto lightly tapped his tip against Weiss's lips, he liked the look she was giving him, what with her half-lidded eyes clouded in lust, it only drove his arousal to new heights, but with that lust, he could also see just the tiniest hint of hesitance in them directed at the situation she was in. Though, that didn't surprise him, it had in fact been less than a minute since Weiss had been scolding him like some sort of disciplinarian, so to go from that, to where she was now on her knees with his cock giving her her first kiss, anyone in her position would be just as nervous no matter how horny they were. Go on then, Naruto said casually, letting go and just letting his cock head rest on her mouth, an image he wouldn't be forgetting anytime soon, you've watched the video so you should know what to do. While still hesitant, Weiss nodded and let her eyes fall down to the cock resting on her mouth, my mother and sister took this inside of them. Just remembering the vulgar acts they performed on this, thing, brought a strange feeling to her stomach, though, it wasn't one that she found unpleasant, if anything, it was one that she felt compelled to satisfy, like a growing hunger for something not relating to food. Fuuk, good girl, Naruto groaned out above her as she opened her mouth and flicked the underside of his cockhead with her tongue, bringing his hand down to thread his fingers through Weiss's soft white hair, he let her go at her own pace for the moment, it wouldn't do either of them any good if he scared her off by being too rough when they'd only just started. Weiss blushed as she heard his praise, why does that make me feel so happy? She asked herself mentally while bringing her hands up to grasp his cock, she didn't know why, but hearing him say that along with his hands gentle touch on her head sent butterflies to her stomach, that plus the taste of his salty precum staining her taste buds and the schnee heiress had a cacophony of intense sensations running through her mind and body that she barely felt she could handle. Doing as shed seen in the videos, Weiss let saliva accumulate in her mouth before parting her lips and letting it drool all over Naruto's length, after that she carefully wrapped her fingers around his girth with both of her hands they wouldn't fit otherwise and slowly began jerking off with the added lubrication, when she heard him sigh in pleasure and nod discomfort, a delighted feeling ran through her as she knew she was doing good. Yes, just like that baby, Naruto groaned out throatily above Weiss as her hands sped up in their movements from her increased enthusiasm, somehow. Even though this was her first time giving someone a hand job, she was perfectly tracing each of his throbbing veins and adding just the right amount of pressure when she needed to. If he didn't think it before, which he did, there was no doubt in his mind now that the Shni women were naturally gifted at sex. Naruto clenched his teeth though, as like Shed somehow heard his vulgar praise for her family and things she would have never taken pride in before. Weiss brought her mouth back to the tip of his dick and started kissing and licking it. At the same time, her hands were flying up and down the blonde's massive shaft in a blur of movement, creating an obscene and repetitive wet sound that resounded in his office. Throwing his head back, Naruto moaned as Weiss brought one of her hands down to play with his balls, her small hands already felt amazing on his shaft alone, but on his sensitive nuts as well. It was like she was trying to bring him to the afterlife early. That, however, wasn't enough for Weiss, she didn't want Naruto to just feel pleasure, no, she wanted him to act like he did when he was with her mother and sister, bursting with lust and sexual hunger to the point he became a savage who would manhandle her onto his cock and fuck her into oblivion, her cheeks burned crimson at the way her thoughts had changed in as little as half an hour, but based on what she remembered, they had loved it, so what was the harm in her wanting to try it? With those thoughts and one quick smile up to Naruto at his pleasure-stricken face, why stuck her tongue out and licked all over his cock, tracing her tongue over one of the many engorged veins on his cock, she followed it all the way to the base of his dick, when she was satisfied after doing so multiple times, the white haired girl dipped her head down lower and kissed each of his balls individually before sucking them into her mouth and bathing them in her cool saliva. Um, Weiss moaned contentedly as Naruto held her hair between his fingers after she let go of his spit covered nuts with two loud pops, not wanting her to stray too far from his cock, though that was something she was all too happy to comply with. 
moving back to Naruto's cockhead while dragging her tongue along the underside of his cock. With one last kiss to his tip, she parted her lips and started taking his cock into her mouth. She had to breath through her nose as his dick quickly filled her mouth, blocking her throat and nearly making her gag. Unaware of her struggle, Naruto's legs buckled and his eyes closed as his cock got engulfed in the warm yet cool orifice that was the Shni Eris mouth, it was a feeling he would never grow tired of no matter how many times he experienced it. Fuck, Weiss, that feels amazing, he moaned, bringing even more eagerness to her actions and causing her to start bobbing her head on his cock as she wanted him to keep praising her, something inside of her was awakening that she was completely unaware of. Making sure to use her tongue to lick the underside of his cock, Weiss moved her head back and forth on his length while massaging his balls with both of her hands now. Gods, baby you're doing so good, Naruto groaned at her inexperienced yet enthusiastic sucking, since Weiss couldn't take all of him yet, she was doing her best to pleasure the first few inches of his cock that she could like crazy and it was working. If he wasn't leaning back against his desk, Naruto was certain that his legs would have given out by now with how hard she was going at it, the wet sounds of her intense blowjob were resounding in his office further exciting them both as it rang in their ears just how obscene Weiss was being with his cock. She surprised Naruto when she let his dick fall from her mouth for only a moment before she grabbed his length and began beating it against her cheeks and outstretched tongue. So big, she breathed out in awe, the cool air washing over his length as she did so, sending tingles of pleasure up his spine and down to his toes. You're doing so much better than your sister did her first time, Naruto said as she took him back into her mouth, gritting his teeth as she began jerking him off in tandem with each fast bob of her head, and he wasn't lying, not even Winter had been this enthusiastic her first time, the elder Shni sister was more inclined to letting him take charge due to the rigidity of her training as an Atlas soldier, not that he ever complained about that however. That was why Naruto was caught off guard when, out of nowhere, Weiss backed off of his dick and stood up before him, he was about to question her as she left his cock hard and unsatisfied, but he quickly came to understand her motivations when she began stripping herself of her dress and high heels. Naruto watched hungrily as his white-haired student carelessly discarded her clothes and shoes beside her, uncaring for their expensive material as she was left in nothing but a white set of lingerie that had his cock throbbing in abject desire, his eyes couldn't help but zone in on the darker than white spot that her panties sported, letting him know that someone was just as if not more excited than he was at what was to come. Do do you like it? Weiss looked up at him expectantly regaining his attention and reminding him of two other women who'd asked him the same question in almost the exact same way, she did a quick twirl to show off everything her body had to offer, from her petite but still firm breasts, to her pert ass that he knew would feel amazingly soft in his palms. Naruto felt something inside of him snap upon hearing her seemingly innocent question, had already been barely holding himself back from just grabbing and fucking her right then and there, but something about the lustful innocence that he could see shining in her sky-blue eyes had all of that restraint up and vanishing only to be replaced by a burning arousal. Wah, what are you doing, you brute? Weiss screamed in surprise, her earlier attitude coming back for a brief moment when she suddenly found herself lifted up by her sides and bent over Naruto's desk, it was extinguished rather quickly, however, when she looked back and saw just how her professor was looking at her, a shiver went down her spine upon seeing his glowing blue orbs, she felt like a cornered rabbit being gazed upon by a hungry fox. Despite that fear though, an intense warmth filled Weiss' core as she found that his stare excited her just as much as it scared her, and because of that she couldn't help but spurn him on, wanting nothing more than to be ravaged just like the women in the videos Shed watched had been. Well are you going to do something then, or are you satisfied with just staring at me for the rest of the day? She asked Naruto haughtily even going so far as to close her eyes and do her best to look arrogant, a hard task seeing as she was completely filled with arousal by that point, here you have the heiress to the Shni family bent over your desk, helpless, and yet I bet you're too scared to even do anything. Weiss' mental grin grew wider and wider as she heard Naruto's growl of anger at her taunts, she was so close to getting him to snap, she just knew it, what? Did I say something that upset you? Why don't you prove me wrong then? Someone who's slept with so many women should know how to shut me upright. Or am I right in thinking you're some kind of coward who can't even see things through to the end? Opening her eyes to look back at him again, Weiss was just about to say one last thing to hopefully set him off, only for her eyes to widen tremendously when she saw that her goal had already been achieved, Naruto's eyes were narrowed to slits as he looked down at her like a bull about to charge at a cocky matador. She had only a moment to feel Naruto pull her soaked through panties to the side and see his arms flex and feel his fingers dig into her butt cheeks before the wind was taken out of her as he pierced her dripping cunt in one fell swoop, oh fuh. Weiss squealed, 
her eyes rolling to the back of her head and her body going limp on the blonde's desk as he took her virginity with one harsh thrust. Naruto growled as her pussy gripped onto his length like a hungry python for the next few minutes, he remained still as he let her get used to the feeling of his cock stretching out her walls, a small trickle of blood rolling down between her legs. Surprisingly, Weiss felt no discomfort at the sudden loss of her hymen, no, because of how excited and aroused Shed already been, combined with her resistance to pain from all of her training as a huntress of the Shni family, all she could feel was the unending bliss that came with having a dick as large as Naruto's pressing against her sensitive walls. Um, start moving already, Weiss whined while trying to move her butt back against him, she quickly found that she couldn't, however, as Naruto's hands were still holding onto her hips and keeping her still. Is that how you ask for something? He asked the needy heiress huskily, even going so far as to tease her by moving his hips around in a circular motion. Oh godses, she moaned, her legs kicking the air behind them from the pleasurable sensations that ran through her body from his actions, please fuck me. Weiss begged, bringing her hands behind her and to Naruto's hips in an attempt to encourage him to move. Not good enough, he replied harshly, slowly dragging his dick out of her gripping folds in a way that Weiss would have found amazing if it weren't for the fact he was threatening to end their time together. Why wait? Don't pull out. She cried and decided to throw what little pride she had left out of Naruto's office window. Fuck me please, daddy. I need it. I need your big dick inside me so badly. Ruin my tight pussy and make me your personal slut. Naruto's eyes widened marginally at the name she called him, after a second of thinking though, he shrugged and grinned savagely, looks like the Shni sisters were more alike than he originally thought. Meanwhile, Weiss felt a strange freedom in referring to Naruto as she had, it was like something Shed been holding back had finally been let loose, like a weight had come off her shoulders and now she could move forward without worry, she didn't have any more time to think on that as Naruto decided Shed done good enough and that he would answer her pleas for more. Oh. Fuck me. Fuck me harder, daddy. Weiss wailed, her legs shaking and her pussy spasming around Naruto's length as he gave her no reprieve when he started, fucking her lithe form into his desk as her cunt gushed around his cock over and over again. You want it harder, baby? Naruto asked while grunting with each powerful thrust of his hips, leaning down so that he was beside her head, he growled into her ear, you want to be another one of my shni women. You want to learn what it means to be beneath me. Moaning my name he sharply thrusted into her cunt getting a cry of ecstasy from Weiss, taking my cock, and writhing in bliss? Yes, she hissed, gritting her teeth while her eyelids fluttered, fuck me. Ruin me. Treat me no better than you did my mother and sister. Make me your little schnee fuck toy. Yeah. Naruto groaned as her cunt clamped down on his cock, you think you can handle that? He asked gruffly while looking down at her moaning and sweaty form, she was barely taking what he was already giving her and yet she wanted more. And what was that about me being too scared to do anything? You still think that's true? When all she could do was moan incoherently and beg for more, Naruto scowled and said, that's what I thought, before slapping her on the ass and plowing into her juicy cunt even faster, she asked for it, if she couldn't handle the ecstasy that came with it, that wasn't his problem. Tears formed in Weiss' eyes at the combination of pain and pleasure she was experiencing at the hands of her combat professor, she was being absolutely dominated by his cock, her walls were reshaping forming around his massive pole with every powerful thrust he gave her. Come on baby, how are you gonna be my fuck toy if you can't even handle a little pressure? Naruto groaned while slamming his dick into her depths, he grunted as his tip kissed her womb, her womanhood tightening up each time he did so, it was like he was sticking his cock into a vice grip each time he bottomed out inside of her. Oh my fucking ending. Biting down on her lower lip, Y saw her life flash before her eyes as his girth scraped against her g-spot sending her spiraling down into the nth climax of their session, then as though he really wanted to kill her, Naruto reached down between her and the desk and very lightly pinched at her engorged clit, his other hand was over her mouth in an instant, muffling her screams of ecstasy as her orgasm was heightened beyond anything she could ever imagine. For a moment, Weiss thought she was floating amongst the fragments of the broken moon, in the next though, she fell down from the astral plane and back into her quaking and shivering body, she felt weak, her cunt spasming around Naruto's length as she experienced the post-orgasmic bliss that came with such an explosive release, she gasped as he bit down on her neck, stars entering her vision as he gave her no time to recover and began pummeling into her overstimulated walls. You like that baby? You like me fucking into you while you come? His hips were a blur as he pounded into her velvet tunnel, her drenched folds splashing his crotch in her juices with each smack of their hips while a loud wet slap echoed in his office. Yes, I love it. She moaned to the heavens, her voice cracking, as he chased after his own climax, his constant thrusts sending her to her tippy toes as he fucked her against his desk. 
Yes, who? Maruto gritted his teeth as Weiss began doing what she could to throw her ass back to meet his thrusts. Yes, daddy. I love it so much, she cried out as a chain of mini orgasms slammed into her, taking her breath away and making her spasm rapidly around his throbbing length. Naruto growled as her folds clamped down on his girth, making him fight against the tightness of her walls as he buried himself balls deep inside of her over and over again, he was close, Weiss could feel it even before he did, the way his cock jumped angrily inside of her, preparing to fill her womb with his warmth as he continued piercing her insides, she craved it, hungered for it, no, rather, she needed it. Oh gods. Come. Don't pull out daddy. Give me everything. Fill your schnee fuck toy up with your precious seed. Weiss cried, her back arching as she was sent into another mind-bending orgasm from just the thought of him cream-pieing her. Digging his fingers into her hips, Naruto put his all into the last few thrusts of his dick before letting pleasure take over his mind, Fuick. Coming. Take it all baby. He roared and planted his crotch against her perky ass as he was finally sent over the edge, his cock pulsed furiously with each thick shot of cum that he deposited into her eager womb, his hips jerked, his body tensing and his arms flexing as her quivering cunt tightened and milked his cock for all it was worth. It was only after a minute or so of mutual spasming and sighs of bliss that Naruto finally pulled out of Weiss' stuffed cunt, she moaned pitifully as she felt him do so, her sensitive walls protesting the movement as his still hefty girth scraped along her walls upon exit. Admiring the sight of his newest conquest simply laying against his desk while his cum slowly dripped from her folds, Naruto sighed as he began looking for his discarded pants, he still had things he had to do after all. As much as I would love to continue our fun for a while longer, I am afraid I have other matters to attend to, he said while pulling up his pants, only cringing minorly when he realized he would be dealing with sticky boxers for a bit until he could get a shower and a change of clothes. Also, when you recover, be a good girl and clean the place up for me, alright? Naruto asked the near comatose Weiss while fixing his belt, by the way, don't worry about being discovered, no one enters my office without my say so take all the time you need. And with that final thing said, he exited the room and closed the door behind him, just missing Weiss' moan of sadness as his cum continued to pour out of her cunt in droves. The next day came and Naruto was in his office like every other day completing the work that every teacher hated, paperwork, sighing as he stamped a student's test with a failing grade, he was just about to move on to the next one when a knock on his door interrupted him. Come in, he directed whoever it was outside to enter without looking up, these tests wouldn't grade themselves you know. Shifting a paper over to the graded pile once had stamped it, Naruto's ears perked up as he listened to the door open before whoever it was carefully shuffled inside and lightly closed the door behind them. Go ahead and tell me what you need because I am quite busy at the moment, he said and stamped another paper, was the stack getting larger or was it just him? Also why did he assign so much homo? Professor Naruto. The blonde found his thoughts halted as a voice he honestly didn't expect to hear from so soon reached his ears. Looking up, Naruto smiled as he was greeted to the sight of a blushing Weiss. Weiss? What's up? I didn't think you'd be back so soon after what we did yesterday, he said, smirking when the blush on her cheeks spread to the rest of her face. His eyes widened as he took in the fact that she wasn't wearing her usual outfit. Instead, she had on a white crop top that left her shoulders and flat stomach exposed and a light blue miniskirt that stopped just above her mid-thigh, leaving her slender legs on display, the only thing that remained relatively the same were her high-heeled boots, having changed to a set of actual high heels that complemented the rest of her look perfectly, it was a set of clothing Naruto never thought he would see her wearing as it was more something like Yang's style. Where do you get the outfit? He asked as he couldn't stop the curiosity he felt building up inside him. Apparently that was the right question to ask as in the next moment, Weiss smiled and her eyes glowed with delight. I am glad you asked, Weiss said proudly, doing a twirl to show off her clothes that had Naruto licking his lips and his cock hardening as her skirt lifted up, giving him a glimpse of the crotchless panties she had on underneath, unlike the previous day though, he successfully held himself back this time so that she could finish what she was saying, I asked Yang for advice on what to wear too, entice a man and had everything she suggested brought to my dorm by my family's servants this morning. Looking at her professor's clearly enraptured expression, Weiss smirked and slowly approached him, so, did it work? Are you enticed? She asked sensually, dragging her palm across the surface of Naruto's desk before sitting down beside the stack of papers he had been working on. I don't know, I am pretty busy, he said, looking at all the ungraded papers he still had on his desk, even though he knew there was no way he was letting Weiss walk out of his office without fucking her. She knew it too, but that didn't mean she couldn't have fun with it, while yesterday she had been the stuck-up heiress that wanted to get the man in front of her fired for his lascivious acts, 
Now after experiencing just what everyone else that had slept with had, she was understandably addicted. That was why she was here after being with him just yesterday, she needed him to give her the same pleasure she had gotten yesterday. So looking and making sure she maintained eye contact with Naruto. Weiss hopped off his desk and began slowly stripping herself down in front of him, the first thing that came off was her top, tossing it behind her, she stopped her instinctual reaction to cover her modest breasts from his view and instead bent down and unhooked her skirt from her hips, tossing that behind her just as callously as she had done with her top, Weiss stood in front of Naruto in only the pair of crotchless blue panties had seen just before. What about now, daddy? Weiss asked again, her fingers playing with her outer labia while trails of her pussy juice ran down the inside of her thighs. Hum, I think I can make some time, Naruto faked being contemplative as he felt his cock become steel hard at her words. Oh shit. Daddy, fuck me. You're so big inside me. Barely five minutes had passed after Weiss stripped tease before the Shni heiress found herself bouncing on top of Naruto's lap, moaning senselessly, her eyelids fluttered and her ass clapped against his thighs every time she dropped down on his dick, leaning forward, she bit down on the skin of his neck and sucked as his cock punched into her core, marking his neck with purple bruises. For but an instant, Weiss cursed her biology as her aura healed any stretching her cunt had done around Naruto's dick the previous day, but as he rearranged her guts once again, sending waves of raw pleasure straight to her brain, she quickly stopped caring about that little tidbit, if anything, she now praised her biology for she would always be tight for her Uzumaki daddy. Um, that's it baby, ride that dick, sitting back, Naruto relaxed and just let Weiss move at her own pace as she rode his cock like an experienced cowgirl, truly, this girl was a natural, with her hands resting on his chair's armrests and her squeezing cunt flying up and down his length, the blonde couldn't think of anything but the pleasure she was giving him. Likewise, Weiss was in a daze as she continued jumping on his cock, Fuick, so good, she moaned, her walls clamping down around his length hungrily every time she dropped down to the base of his dick, already, she could feel her first climax of their time together approaching as her walls spasmed around him. Biting down on her lower lip, Weiss did her best to keep fucking herself of Naruto's cock but the minute the first ripples of pleasure ran up from her cunt through her spine, her hips froze, with her eyelids fluttering closed, she struggled to keep herself up as her hips began jerking erratically in sync with the violent spasms her cunt had around Naruto's dick, what she wasn't prepared for was for Naruto to grab her ass and hold her from falling. In her pleasure-filled mind Weiss was afraid that he was going to start fucking her right then and there, but like before, it was only when she was at least slightly recovered that he began moving, though when he did, she panicked and wrapped her arms around his neck as they suddenly shifted positions. Fuck. Baby, you're gripping me so hard. Naruto groaned as he stood up with Weiss in his arms, it was like Shed just lost her virginity all over again with the way she was clamping onto him, not one to let such a thing stop him, though, he quickly began lifting and dropping her into his thrusting hips, fucking his hardened length into her sopping womanhood and sending them both to new heights of pleasure. You're fucking me so hard. Weiss cried out and buried her face in his chest as she was subjected to the harsh pounding Naruto was giving her. Wet squelches filled the room as her cunt was stretched out every time he went balls deep inside of her, the nerves in her pussy were screaming as his girth scraped along her walls, heat that had been pooling inside of her core exploded throughout her body as a particularly harsh thrust from the blonde had her mouth falling open sent her straight into a mind-melting orgasm. While she went through that, Naruto moved them to a wall and this time, instead of waiting for her to come down from her climax, instantly began fucking her through it. Weiss screamed as her sensitive cunt was overstimulated by his sharp thrusts and fireworks exploded in her head, her pussy was spasming and clamping down firmly on his cock as miniature orgasms rocked her body. With Weiss back against the wall, Naruto only needed one hand on her ass to hold her up, so using his free hand to pull her arms from around his neck, Naruto lowered his head and sucked and licked at her tits, relishing in the taste of her sweat-coated skin, one by one, he played with them as he continued fucking her against the wall. While not as large as her sister or mother's he still loved them all the same as he pinched her nipples between his teeth and pulled on them lightly. Once he was finished giving his schnee fuck toys breasts his attention, he moved up so that their foreheads were pressing together, staring into each other's eyes, they would have looked like any normal loving couple, that is, had it not been for the fact that their crotches were colliding and creating the loudest and lutest wet smacking sound as Naruto fucked his massive cock into her quivering quim. Kissing her. He felt more than heard as Weiss moaned when he picked up the pace of his rutting, her hands dug into his scalp as he used her as nothing more than a convenient onahole, making out, their tongues wrapped around the others as they fought for dominance, a dominance that was easily won by the more experienced out of the two. While above, they continued their ferocious liplock, 
Naruto groaned as he finally felt the effects of her spasming womanhood on his cock after who knows how long, so distracted in worshipping Weisbody and ravishing her lips, he didn't even notice that he was already on the edge of his release and all he needed was one final push before he fell over. It seemed that the white-haired girl he was fucking did though, as she had already wrapped her legs around his hips and removed any chance he had of pulling out, groaning into her lips, Naruto felt his glutes tense as he let loose the steaming load had been building up inside of the Shni Eris, painting her walls white and sending her into a climax of her own. Holy shit, he clenched his teeth after separating from their kiss, the tight grip Weiss cunt had on his dick as she came had him seeing stars in his vision as she squeezed every last drop of his cum from his balls. It took her around five minutes to let up on him, and when she did the first thing Naruto did was drop down into his chair with an exhausted sigh, he wasn't weak by any means, but holding someone's weight even supported would drain anyone that was also fucking that same person. Weiss groaned as his sudden drop caused his cock to grind against her sensitive walls, her eyes snapped open, however, as she felt him lift her off his lap and in turn off of his slowly softening dick, while not unpleasant, she still winced occasionally as his expansive girth made its exit. That wasn't the end of her troubles it seemed though, as when she felt his cock finally leave her folds and her pussy was left empty but satisfied, Naruto suddenly inserted another much smaller object into her folds. There, that should keep anything from spilling like last time, he said and placed her on her feet without even explaining what it was, the mystery was solved, however, as in the very next second, Weiss yelped and felt a shudder go down her spine as a pleasurable but low vibration started up inside of her. Did you just put a vibrator inside of my pussy? Weiss asked tiredly, too exhausted to care just yet as she just rested her head against his chest while her cunt spasmed at the new source of pleasure, she'd heard about them from, you guessed it, Yang, but had never had the chance to actually do any of her own research on them, you know I still have CLAAASSS? Biting down on her lower lip, she felt her hips jerk violently at the sudden burst of ecstasy she was receiving from the small device going crazy inside of her. And? Get to class then, I still have work I need to finish. Naruto slapped Weiss on the ass one last time for good measure and smirked at her annoyed expression, he quickly erased it though and replaced it with one of bliss as he randomly adjusted the setting from low to high with the remote he had in his hand. With the knowledge that Naruto was basically telling her to attend the rest of her classes that day with the pleasurable distraction inside of her, Weiss did her best to get dressed while ignoring it, hopefully, and this was just wishful thinking on her part, nothing would go wrong, but knowing just whose class she had next, the wealthy heiress wouldn't hold her breath. And so there I was. One man against twenty hungry Beowulfs. Not any hunter could come out of that alive, but I am no ordinary hunter. Ha ha ha. No, such a situation was Childsbla. The door opening to Professor Port's classroom interrupted the man as he shared one of the many stories he had of his gallantry as a young hunter, his thick eyebrows furrowed in confusion upon seeing just who it was that had entered his class so late during his lesson. Hum, you're late Weiss, this is quite unexpected of someone like you he said while crossing his arms over his belly. Sorry, professor, it won't happen again, Weiss did her best to apologize despite knowing it was more than likely going to happen many more times, her heart was racing as she stood at the front of the class, she could almost feel the way her fellow students and teammates looked at her from where they sat. What if someone notices, Weiss thought, clenching her fists against her sides while her lower body twitched imperceptibly, her cheeks were flush and she could only hope everyone thought it was from embarrassment and not arousal. She was ashamed to admit it, but the thought of everyone figuring out what was wrong with her had her extremely hot and bothered. Well go ahead and take your seat then, class is almost over anyways, and don't make this a habit, young lady, I've already had to deal with that from other students like yourself, Port sent her away and began his impassioned speech once more, not without Weiss hearing what he said under his breath though, reminding her that she wasn't Naruto's only visitor for sexual activities. Taking her seat next to her team, she wasn't surprised when Ruby was the first to confront her, the only problem was, she couldn't focus at all now that she was seated. Where have you been, Weiss? Ruby whispered to her, her voice filled with concern, we thought you said you would be right back. Uh, I was, doing something, yeah, I got caught up in something, sorry, Weiss tried giving them a reassuring look, but by the way they were all deadpanning at her and watching her squirm in her seat, she knew they didn't believe a word she said, or at least they knew she was hiding something. A tiny yelp escaped Weiss' lips as the vibrator was turned up to high for the briefest of moments, mentally, she cursed Naruto, she could just imagine the smirk he had on his face as he knew what he was doing to her. Our princess was busy for sure, busy doing someone, Yang whispered under her breath with a smirk. Blake blushed upon hearing what her spitfire of a partner said with her sensitive ears, 
The idea of a prim and proper girl likewise doing something so scandalous as skipping class to have sex was like something straight out of one of her romance novels. Meanwhile, unaware of the thoughts and things her two teammates were having and saying about her, Weiss mustered as much mental strength as she could to keep herself composed until the class was over, lunch was next, and knowing her professor, he liked to eat in his office, so all she had to do was hurry over once the bell rang, but as the minutes ticked by, and her squirming and fidgeting became more and more pronounced as she was brought closer and closer to her release in the middle of class, it was with slight panic that she realized she may not make it that far. Didn't Port say that class was almost finished when I arrived? Weiss thought frantically, deciding to take a risk, she glanced at the clock but almost cried as she saw that there were still ten more minutes left before the bell rang, was time moving in slow motion or something. Those next ten minutes were probably the most mentally excruciating minutes of Weiss' life, stuck in her chair, moving this way and that as she tried to stave off the quickly approaching euphoria, she ignored all the curious stares she was receiving from those around her, but the minute Port said his last piece and the bell rang signifying that class was over, she was off. Ruby watched bewildered as their team's resident ice queen and academic made a beeline to the door to Port's classroom before exiting with nothing but a quick thank you to the confused man. What's up with her? She asked no one in particular, but when she turned and saw that her sister was smirking and that Blake was blushing like she'd seen something scandalous, her curiosity peaked, wait, do you guys know why she was acting so funny? Sharing a glance with Yang, Blake looked at Ruby while doing her best to beat down the blush growing on her cheeks, it's nothing you should worry yourself with Ruby she said much to the girl's annoyance. In truth Blade had seen something scandalous, so while Ruby complained about being kept in the dark while she was their team leader, the cat faunus was more focused on the memory of a white liquid flowing down the inside of Weiss' thighs as she ran away, she'd already known what the heiress had been doing before joining them in class, but seeing such a lewd sight only increased the obscenity of what Blake was imagining. That lucky bitch, both she and Yang thought at the same time. Back with Weiss, she was glaring at an amused and smiling Naruto after running all the way back to his office, she struggled to stay upright as her legs were shaking, a condition that her blonde professor knew had nothing to do with exhaustion. How did go? Did you have fun? He asked while upping the vibration to its highest setting and leaving it there. Like a marionette doll with its strings cut, Weiss eyes clenched shut and her mouth fell open as her legs finally gave out from underneath her, she could do nothing but sit there and moan as she was sent spiraling into blissful rapture. Her cunt was spasming and the floor beneath herself was being drenched in her sexual fluids as the toy still vibrated inside her. Glancing up at Naruto, she did her best to beg him to fuck her but all that came out of her mouth was a mess of jumbled words that even the best interpreter wouldn't understand. Ah, 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 Naruto said while wagging his finger mockingly, you know by now that's now how you beg. Embarrassed, but not enough to ignore the spasms coming from her womanhood. Weiss fought through the pleasure to look up at him through her teary eyes, pee please, daddy. Please, 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 fuck me with your big hard cock. My pussy feels so empty without you inside me. Looking down at her, Naruto smirked and stood up from his chair whilst also undoing his belt buckle, yay, that was perfect. The next few days went by as normal as normal could be for those in Beacon, Naruto gave those that approached him the services that they wanted, and continued teaching his classes and grading his papers like clockwork. As a matter of fact, he was just doing as such in his office when he was asked to speak with his fellow combat instructor, they were sharing reviews on their students' progress in areas, finding out who needed help with what and how. That was all then, thank you. Glinda stacked up all of her papers and made her way to his door. All right, have a nice rest of your day, Naruto said with a smile on his face as he watched her leave and close his door behind herself. When he was certain that she was gone, he groaned and leaned back so that he could look underneath his desk, there he watched as Weiss, on her knees with her lips stretched lewdly around his cock, bobbed her head up and down in his lap while quiet slurps and needy moans reached his ears. What am I going to do with you? Naruto sighed pleasurably and grunted as the girl who was sucking his dick under his desk buried her face in his crotch, effortlessly taking his entire length into her throat. Fuck, here it comes you little slut, don't spill a single drop. He moaned and held her head down against his lap as he came, not that Weiss minded as she only sucked harder and moaned as load after sticky load of his hot comb was fired straight down her throat and into her waiting stomach. Once Naruto's release had finished and he had let go of her head, Weiss backed off of his cock with a wet suck and a loud pop before gasping for some much needed air, she watched with bated breath as his cock slowly softened, finally spent after giving her who knows how many loads of his comb since she'd taken her place underneath his desk. 
Bringing her head to it one last time, she made sure that Naruto was watching as she laid a wet smooch to his cockhead, kissing it like it was her long-lost lover, before backing off and smiling up at him. Did you like that, daddy? Did I do a good job? Weiss asked him, tilting her head and swiping her tongue over her plump lips to lick up the precum that now stained it. Yeah, baby, Naruto sighed while letting his head fall back in the chair as sweat dripped down his forehead, the women of the Shni family had to be succubi or something, you did great. Walking down the grand halls of Beacon Academy, Blake, the resident adult novel connoisseur and Kat Faunus was on her way to Mr. Uzumaki's office with a near indiscernible spring in her step, while she did, however, the dark-haired girl inwardly smirked as she felt the lust-filled gazes her peers were giving her, or to be more specific, her ass. She knew that her butt was anything but average, Yang's constant remarks and playful gropes made sure of that, but that didn't mean it wasn't still a boost to her ego knowing that others were as attracted to her as they were, still, while she did like it, there was really and truthfully only one person whose opinion of her she actually cared for. And that's who she was currently heading towards. He should nt be busy right now. Blake thought with a small smile on her face, it had been far too long since Shed last spent some private time with her favorite professor, oh, she couldn't wait to feel his touch again. Blushing deeply now, Blake made haste to her destination, this time, completely unaware and completely uncaring of the looks she got. Once she arrived a few minutes later, she quickly slipped into the large classroom and made her way to the door behind which her goal lay, the blush that had been light in color was now covering her entire face. Her heart rate was picking up and she was breathing like she was in heat now that her objective was within arm's reach, all she had to do was go through one last barricade and pleasure unlike anything in the world would be hers once more. That is, before her ears twitched and her hand froze right before she knocked, the cause. Unless she was going crazy, Blake could have sworn she had heard what sounded like a girl's giggles coming from the other side of the door, her brows furrowed in annoyance at the thought. There is no way I am going back to my dorm without getting my pussy flooded. She was way too horny to turn back and give up, after all, she came here for one reason, and one reason only, to get fucked until she saw the brother gods themselves, so instead of going to knock, she discarded any notion of politeness and just went to open the door directly, besides, who could even be with him right now. Just before she could, however, she was forced to take a quick step back as the door swung open and someone stepped out, that someone, though, caused Blake's eyes to narrow in slight hostility as they paused with wide eyes at the sight of the black-haired cat Faunus. Long, white hair that as much as she had tried to fix it, still remained messy and unkempt, a fair complexion that was now flushed pink while drops of sweat trailed down her forehead, and clothes that had always been kept pristine, now rumpled and clearly thrown on without care. Blake never thought she would have something that she could share in experience with the Schnee family's uptight heiress, but here in front of her was evidence of just that taking in each and every detail that she could see, it was clear as day what Weiss, the uppity princess of her team, had just been doing. B. Blake, what are you doing here? Weiss screamed in surprise, she was mortified beyond belief, she knew Blake didn't like her all that much, and even though they'd gotten closer as of late, who knew what the girl would do now that she had what could be considered as dirt on her. Her only consolation was that there was maybe a chance that she could twist her being there into something else. Looking over the panicking she's shoulder at the amused face of their professor, Blake sighed, the same reason you were here, I suppose, she told her while doing her best to hide her annoyance. After hearing that, Weiss instantly deflated, as much as she tried, she couldn't come up with a response in time, and anything she said now would be an obvious lie, so with a blush covering her pale cheeks, she nervously pulled at the hem of her dress before raising her head and looking Blake in her eyes to at least try and keep some of her dignity, she had a reputation as a daughter of the Schnee family to uphold after all. And so what about it? You have no right to judge me if you're here to do the same. When did I even judge you? Blake looked at Weiss in confusion upon hearing her defensive attitude, I just find it ironic how you, aka the one who always talks about the rules and how we have to make sure to follow them, is secretly actually doing something as promiscuous as having sex with our professor. Seeing that what she said shut Weiss up, Blake scoffed and brushed past the stunned girl to enter the room behind her. Once she was in, she closed and locked the door before turning back around and making eye contact with her still grinning professor, only now he was seated behind his desk like none of what she assumed had happened, happened. For what felt like an eternity to Blake, but was truly only half a minute, they both remained silent while continuing their impromptu staring contest, at least, until her patience finally ran out. Why did you have to do it with her of all people? 
She asked with her arms crossed in front of her and an even deeper frown than was normal for her on her face. Do what? Naruto asked with the complete opposite on his. Blake hated that smile of his, she hated how infuriatingly attractive it was and she hated how it made her heart flutter, it was like a spell was casted on her whenever she saw it, weakening her defenses and making her unsteady on her feet, causing her to show emotions she wasn't used to showing and bringing out feelings of lust and desire that she never thought she had. But what she hated most though, was how right now he was using that smile to taunt her, to confuse and bait her into answering a question he already had the answer for. Blake, however, would not be fooled, she would not fall to his scheme, because no matter what he said or how he acted, nothing could get rid of the potent smell of sex that was currently blanketing every corner of the room, and seeing as the window wasn't open to let any fresh air in, she wouldn't be surprised if had done so on purpose knowing she was coming. Screw you, Uzumaki, Blake huffed out angrily, shifting on her feet as a thin trail of transparent liquid trailed down the inside of her thigh. Go right ahead. I mean I know you want to, kitten, Naruto replied teasingly before laughing when Blake's entire face turned red in embarrassment. What? Should I fake a cough or two? Would that make it easier for you to get in the mood? He continued, his amusement rising even higher as she sputtered and fumbled over her words. If Weiss had been mortified earlier, Blake was now completely humiliated, and it wasn't just him calling her kitten that was affecting her no matter how demeaning a name it was, no, his comments reminded her of one of the most embarrassing acts she had ever committed, something that, to this day, she wished she could forget. It had been a day like any other, Blake had woken up early like she always did, ate breakfast with her team like she always did, and commented on whatever they were talking about only when she had to, like she always did. It had been a day like any other, except for one detail that Blake couldn't help but notice. In the last class of the day, and arguably her favorite class out of all, Blake's nose scrunched up and her head tilted to the side in mild confusion as Professor Uzumaki walked past where her team was seated, he was lecturing them on how to be efficient and save energy while fighting hordes of Grimm, and while that was definitely important for her future success as a huntress, all of her focus was on the group of different yet familiar scents she could smell wafting off of him. Is that headmistress Salem? Blake thought with an imperceptible blush tinting her cheeks, she had to be going crazy, yet as she eyed Naruto's back as he walked back down the many rows, her blush increased until even her teammates noticed and wondered what was up with her. She should nt be surprised, while he wasn't one to dress flashy or care too much about his looks, Professor Naruto was naturally handsome already, it wouldn't be a stretch to imagine that she wasn't the only one who noticed that, the only difference was that some who had, had clearly acted on their desires. Whether that be with his students or his co-workers, it was plain as day that he was quite popular in that regard as well. Just imagining his muscular body pressed against her his rough palms grasping at her body, and his lips right next to her ear as he whispered promises of unending pleasure had Blake's mouth parting and her pussy lips tingling, she brushed her thick thighs together and bit down on the inside of her cheek in an effort to quell the warmth she felt building up in her core, but nothing worked, the images her thoughts were sending to her brain already driving her into a frenzy. It was like a torrent of lust was washing over her, bathing her in its warmth as she stared at Naruto's talking form, her sharp amber eyes took in every detail, from his bright and friendly sky blue eyes, down to his strong and powerful arms, not an inch of the blonde's body was missed as Blake discreetly ogled him. K. The only thing that made her sad was that he wasn't naked, his slightly loose clothes hiding the treasure trove she knew lay beneath them. Blake. Maybe she could fix that, he did smell like a plethora of women already, surely he could make some space for herself, all she had to figure out was how she would get that opportunity. Blake Belladonna. Blake's head snapped up and her heart skipped a beat when she finally registered that someone had been calling her name, looking at her teammates in hopes that they were the culprits, she was met with Yang and Ruby's bodies shaking as they did their best to contain their laughter, Weiss on the other hand, made sure she understood it wasn't them by doing something much more ominous. Following where the finger her princess of a teammate was pointing, Blake looked down with fear gripping her heart at the man she had been ogling for the better half of who knows how long, her stomach jumped when she saw him staring right at her. Did he see me staring at him? Blake thought frantically, while her thoughts did represent her true feelings, the possibility of Naruto thinking she was some weirdo who was creeping on him worried her greatly. I've called your name three times now, is everything all right? Naruto asked, leaning back against his desk with his arms crossed in front of him while staring at her so intensely she felt like she could shrivel up and die. Why yes, I just didn't get enough sleep last night, but I am fine now. Blake replied apologetically before sending a withering glare at her snickering teammates. Hum. Alright. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. Naruto decided to give her a warning for now, 
and to Blake's profound shame, something about the commanding way he said it sent shivers of desire throughout her body. Thankfully, before her teammates could do or say anything else to tease her, Naruto continued the rest of his lesson like the interruption hadn't even happened, it was as if he was giving her a moment of respite to catch her breath and calm the fluttering butterflies that had taken over her stomach. Still, as the lesson continued, Blake couldn't help but feel as though Naruto's eyes were glancing in her direction whenever she wasn't looking, but that had to be paranoia right? The next week came and went and Blake attended her classes like she had been since school first started, only now her focus was on something or rather someone else throughout most of that time. Every day when her eyes weren't looking down in order to read a textbook, or she wasn't in the middle of beating down one of her classmates in a spar, she was paying attention, rapt attention, to everything Professor Uzumaki both did and said, whether that be him showing them one of his favorite ways to kill a grim, or telling one of his most treasured stories from when he was an active huntsman, everything that was Naruto Uzumaki was catalogued inside of Blake's memory for later, reviewing. That was why, when the subject of her focus stopped showing up all of a sudden, her mood changed dramatically, gone were her small smiles and infatuated blushes, now all that remained was a sad cat faunus that not even her team could cheer up. Professor Goodwitch taking his place just made things worse, she was covering both of their material as best as she could, but it was clear to all that it was much harder than what she was prepared for. It was on the third day in a row of Professor Uzumaki's absence, however, that everything changed. Class had just ended and everyone was leaving to go about the rest of their days, friends were talking about what they were doing during the upcoming weekend. Teams were making plans around what they'd learned that day, and teachers were preparing for the following day. Blake on the other hand was doing the same thing she'd been doing ever since her favorite professor's first absence, going straight back to Team RWBY's dorm and going right to sleep after finishing her homework, this time though, an obstacle in the form of Ms. Goodwitch stood in her way. Blake, may you stay back for just a few moments? She called out to her as she passed in front of her desk. Not thinking anything of it, Blake did just that. Did you need something from me Ms. Goodwitch? She asked politely. Yes, thank you, and it pertains to why Mr. Uzumaki has been absent these last few days. Blake's slight frustration at being held back vanished upon hearing her favorite professor's last name, she didn't even notice the slight smile that appeared on her face, and if Glinda did, she said nothing about it, only fixing her glasses and leaning back in the plush office chair she was seated in with a sigh. Um. Blake shuffled back and forth nervously as she tried to hold back her curiosity, eventually, though, it became too much for her to handle, is Mr. Uzumaki alright? Is he hurt? Is he on a mission or something? Do you know if he'll be coming back to start teaching us again soon? No offense, of course, I just. Taking a deep breath before continuing, Blake instantly stopped and blushed bright red in embarrassment upon seeing Ms. Goodwitch's deadpan stare, before she could apologize for her lack of respect, the unamused woman continued. As I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted, she gave Blake a pointed stare, Mr. Uzumaki is neither injured, nor is he on a mission, no, currently he is stuck in his bed with a cold like he has been since the beginning of the week, and honestly, how a man as strong and resilient as him could even contract any such sickness is beyond me, she quietly ranted before shaking her head lightly, but that is not why I called you here. Ten minutes later and after being told where to go and what she had to do, Blake was off. But as she walked towards Naruto's on campus home, the curvaceous daughter of the Belladonna family couldn't help but think back to the way Ms. Goodwitch described him, it was obvious that as a huntsman he would have to be both strong and resilient, you wouldn't survive your first encounter with a creature of Grimm if you were otherwise, but something about the way the older woman said those two words sent shivers through Blake's body and heat down to her core. It was like Ms. Goodwitch was trying to tell her something without explicitly saying it, and now that it was stuck in her mind, Blake wouldn't be able to focus on anything properly until she figured out what that was, either that, or she was thinking too deeply about it. Yet there was nothing she could say about that, anything that had to do with Naruto Uzumaki was always analyzed by her to the nth degree, that's just how obsessed with the man she had become, and seeing where she was going, that wouldn't be changing anytime soon. In front of Naruto's home with a bag full of medicine, Blake wondered what between anxiety or excitement most aptly described what she was currently feeling. Never could she have predicted that this would be how her day went, either way, she had a job to accomplish that Ms. Goodwitch entrusted her with, and she wouldn't fail her, the fact that most of her motivation stemmed from what the job entailed would not be mentioned. Fishing through her bag, Blake took out the copy of the key to Naruto's house that Ms. Goodwitch had been using ever since he first got sick, at least that's what the busty MILF said was the case, something told Blake, though, that she wasn't being entirely truthful, in particular, her smell being on Naruto earlier that same week 
and not in the way you would expect after a simple hug or two, but rather with an intensity gained only after doing something much more intimate. Nevertheless, none of that mattered at the moment, what did, however, was taking care of Naruto while he was sick, something that Blake was very much eager to do, so unlocking the door to the modest one-story house, she quickly made her way inside. Then, while taking off her shoes, Blake glanced around and took in as many details of Naruto's home that she could, it was well known to all of Beacon's residents that the blonde man had a house on campus, though it was situated away from the main building and kept out of sight by a grove of trees, but no one knew what it looked like inside. Whether that was because no one had ever been inside the building, or those that had been inside just never spoke of what they saw, Blake did not know. Professor Uzumaki, she called out, announcing herself in hopes of getting a reply, it would be awkward if she caught him in some sort of compromised position, not that she would mind, of course, but at least then she would have an excuse in case it did happen. Naturally, her fantasies didn't come true, rather, her cat ears twitched and her head swiveled suddenly as the faint sound of Amon's groans reached her ears. Seeing a hallway that led to another area of the house, Blake made the assumption that that had to be where Naruto's bedroom was, if not, then she was probably going to have to lug the big guy all the way to his bed, a task that she knew would be as difficult as it was worth it. Luckily, or unluckily depending on who you asked, upon walking down the short connecting hallway, she saw that the sounds were indeed coming from a room, his bedroom she could only assume. Professor Uzumaki. It's Blake, she announced herself once more, knocking on the door twice, Ms. Goodwitch sent me to drop off some medicine for you because she was busy, after a moment of not hearing anything in response, she decided to open the door and give him the medicine herself, it's not like she was hoping to see him or anything, she was just ensuring he got what he needed directly. I am coming in. Blake said to him before opening the door, she cringed when it squeaked and a groan of pain, or maybe annoyance Blake didn't know which left Naruto's mouth, sorry, she apologized while cringing. Don't worry about it, Naruto said hoarsely while doing his best to sit up on his bed, sweat dripped from his brow and his face was scrunched up in pain as he tried and failed to push himself to a seated position, whatever sickness he had was sapping away at his strength, and to the man who could handle a pack of Beowulves like they were a bunch of puppies, he felt humiliated. Blake, seeing just how much effort it was taking him to do such a simple task, didn't hesitate to move closer in order to assist him, she noticed he was only dressed in a simple pair of boxers and a short-sleeved t-shirt, she assumed it was more than likely because of how hot he was feeling. You have to take it easy, professor, you're too sick to do anything right now, so just let me take care of you, she said while sitting down beside him. Resting her hands on his back and front to keep him up, she used the opportunity to run her palms across the many muscles she could feel hidden beneath his shirt, a pleasant warmth filled her stomach as she felt his toned abs flex and his strong back relax under her touch, she was blushing more and more intensely with each passing second and it was obvious what the cause was, she was becoming aroused. Um, thanks for this Blake, Naruto's tired voice woke her from her quiet admiration, he was looking at her with thankful eyes that sent butterflies to her stomach. Don't worry about it. Blake said with a smile, idly running her hand in soothing circles on his back, she frowned though, upon feeling just how damp his clothing was, she cursed when she realized just how high his temperature was, how she didn't feel it earlier, she didn't know, her hands were practically toasting on him. How long have you been like this? Blake asked, feigning curiosity, she already knew the answer, but something in her wanted to talk with Naruto, it didn't matter if it was just one-sided on her part because of how he currently was. Since Saturday, Naruto rasped, the doctor Glinda took him to despite his protests had said all he needed to do was get rest and take some medicine if he felt bad, but that had been on Monday, it was now Wednesday, his throat was still burning, his body still ached, and he didn't see himself getting better anytime soon. Thank you. The blonde man said as Blake, as though reading his mind, passed him the cup of water had left on his bedside table earlier, he gulped down as much of it as he could, which to be honest wasn't very much. Watching him in silence, Blake suddenly had an idea come to her, with it, however, came a blush so intense that she wouldn't be surprised if Naruto thought Shed somehow contracted his sickness. He hey, Naruto. Blake unknowingly said his name because of how nervous she was, if he reacted negatively to what she was about to ask, she would probably run and never show her face at Beacon again, it would be so embarrassing. When she heard Naruto's grunt letting her know that he heard her, she continued, of course, not before taking a deep and calming breath to slow her racing heart. I was thinking, that maybe, I could wipe your sweat and give you a massage after. Lowering her head and rubbing her hands together nervously, she looked up at him, just so you can feel better and recover faster, though, she quickly added on when Naruto regarded her in what she could only assume was caution. What she didn't know was that his narrowed eyes had a completely different meaning, 
one that she would soon find out explicitly. Blake's eyes lit up with excitement when Naruto raised his arms in the air for her, quickly shuffling towards him, she hesitated for only a moment before grasping his shirt by the hem and lifting it up. The heat in her core grew to supercritical temperatures when the first few centimeters of his abdomen were exposed for her to look at, upon raising his shirt up further, it was no longer just a heat that filled her system, but a need, a burning desire that captured her nerves and commanded her body to seek out the male in front of her. If Blake thought she was prepared for Naruto's shirtless form, the truth was now showing itself, she wasn't at all, the moment she brought his shirt over his head and threw it behind them onto the floor somewhere, her eyes were drawn to his body. Blake had thought Naruto was fit, every huntsman was, the only thing was, he wasn't just fit or athletic in build, no, he was ripped. Drool threatened to drip from her agape mouth, it was only because of the high level of self-control born from years of dealing with disrespectful humans that Blake didn't jump Naruto then, that, however, didn't mean she wasn't going to admire him. Swallowing whatever saliva had built up from the hunger she was feeling, she traced each and every inch of his exposed upper body with her eyes, from his strong arms, his broad chest, and down to her favorite part of his body, his abs, not an inch of his sun-kissed skin was missed by her ravenous gaze. Then there was his scent, thick, musky, and everything Blake could imagine a true man smelled like, it was taking over her mind, clogging her senses, and priming her body for what it knew was a prime and virile mate. Blake moaned under her breath as she felt her pussy clench with need while her juices began to soak into her panties, her thick thighs were jiggling as she moved to and fro on the bed in hopes of calming herself down, but nothing worked, every one of her senses were being bombarded with sensations she wasn't used to, sensations that, should she give in to them, would drive her insane. It took her a few minutes, but finally after a little while Blake finally gained enough control of herself to at least continue what it was that she was supposed to be doing. Al alright, Professor, I am going to wipe you down now, s so just relax, she said all of this with a bright red blush covering her face and it was clear to Naruto, even in his current ill state, that she should really be taking her own advice. At the same time, Blake was letting loose multiple hot and steamy breaths as the room seemingly became warmer out of nowhere, either that, or it was her own internal temperature rising, but what reason would there be for that to happen, she was just taking care of her sick teacher in place of Ms. Goodwitch, nothing more, nothing less. Sweat dripped down her brow as the anticipation built up inside of her like a pot of boiling water, Blake was practically shivering with desire now, her eyes were clouded in a sea of lust, their amber color darkening extraordinarily, yet still she made sure to keep herself as focused as she could. Grabbing a soft towel from her bag, Blake tried to hide the excitement she felt as she approached his sculpted body with her hand, the hairs on the back of her neck rose the moment she made contact with his bare chest. Let me know if I am being too rough, okay? Blake whispered to Naruto as she began moving the towel all over his chest and upper body, he only hummed in reply while his eyes closed and his body relaxed under her touch, he doubted she would do anything bad or untoward to him, so he was content with letting her do whatever while he just sat there, what the sick blonde didn't see, or rather, pretended to miss, was Blake's lustful stare. His body is so firm, she thought almost reverently, biting down on her lower lip, Blake couldn't hold back the hunger-filled groan she released upon finally reaching his well-defined abs, Nothing she told herself could contain what she felt anymore, she was in heat, and as she crossed and uncrossed her long, shapely, legs, the urge to mount her blonde professor reached its peak. Hey, Naruto? Can you lay down for me? Blake asked ever so innocently, her narrowed eyes and sharp gaze told a much different story. At that moment, whether Naruto knew it or not, he was nothing more than an injured gazelle being stalked by a hungry cheetah. Thank you, Blake said cheerfully as she watched him go back to laying down. Then, as soon as his back made contact with the bed beneath him, she moved so that she was now kneeling with one of her legs between both of his own, her maneuver was done with such grace, that Naruto barely even reacted to it, only grunting and spreading his legs further apart in order to get comfortable again. What Naruto did react to, though, was the sound of the towel being dropped on the floor and the sudden feel of Blake's soft palms resting on his midsection, he groaned as she traced his muscles with her slender fingers, earning a grin of delight from the seductive cat faunus on top of him as she could tell it was because he liked her touch. Pushing her hands up to grope and massage his pecs, Blake lowered her head until she was hovering right above his stomach, her large breasts pancaked against the area right above Naruto's crotch, bringing grunts of arousal out from the depths of the blonde mon's chest as he felt their amazing softness on him. But distracted as she was, Blake didn't even notice his reaction, no, her goal was to find the source of his mind-melting musk, and in order to do so she closed her eyes and took a big long whiff of her favorite teacher's sweat-coated abdomen, the moment after she did so, however, she was gone. 
No longer was she his student, instead what sat atop him now was a huffing animal that needed its fix, he groaned as she moved her head every which way, burying her nose against his skin and leaving wet kiss marks everywhere she stopped as she also began licking him. Um, professor, you smell and taste so good, Blake moaned while looking up at him with hearts in her eyes. Had he had more strength at his disposal, Naruto would have lost it right then and there and taken her until she was dripping with his seed, at the moment, all he could do was moan and groan in bliss as she had her way with his body, though not unexpectedly, he was anything but upset about it. It's like your scent is taking over my brain, Blake gasped, shivering and panting with need as she took in more and more of Naruto's being, she was grinding her hips against his leg, dragging her dripping wet pussy lips against his muscular calf and sending tendrils of pleasure throughout her body, her nipples were diamond hard now, and as they rubbed against his toned abs, constant sparks of white hot ecstasy were going off inside of her head. In the midst of all of these sensations, Blake could barely even comprehend anything that she was doing, that was why, when she felt something begin to poke into her stomach, she only looked down at it as an afterthought, yet when she saw what it was, her eyes widened and her hands froze as awe cleared the thick haze covering her brain. The thick tubular bulge pushed against the cloth of his boxers, pressing outwards against her midsection like it was seeking out her womb, Blake shuddered at the thought of what lay hidden beneath it, and as though her body was acting of its own accord, the next thing she was doing was trailing her hands down from his abs onto the waistline of his underwear. Pressing her face against his bulge, Blake's eyes rolled into the back of her head as her senses were once again bombarded by what might as well have been a powerful sex drug. Shoo good, she moaned breathily as she found the source of Naruto's potent musk, she was burying her nose into the blonde's crotch like a trained bloodhound, huffing and whining as she became more and more intoxicated on his smell with each passing moment. It was like an aphrodisiac to Blake, ensnaring her in its heady grasp and sending her into the deepest levels of depravity beyond what she's ever known, long since thought dormant instincts were awakening, chemical reactions were going off inside her brain, arousing the faunus blood inside of her and screaming at her to get as close to the strong male underneath her, and since nothing was stopping her, she saw no reason to not follow them. Staring heartedly at Naruto's pulsating bulge and hooking her slender fingers into his boxer's waistband, Blake didn't hesitate to rip the cloth covering off of his crotch and throw it behind her carelessly, she didn't want anything in the way of her prize, and what a prize it was. A loud smack followed by a gasp of surprise echoed throughout the room's quiet atmosphere as Blake was slapped in the face by Naruto's turgid cock. Fuck. Blake gasped harshly, her cheeks were flushed with arousal and her eyes were filled with hunger as she stared cross-eyed up at what his boxers had been holding back from the world. This is, you you're so, metaphorical hearts appeared in her eyes as Naruto's erect and throbbing penis pressed against her face, standing tall from his body and pulsating with an abundance of life, his prodigious member was driving her wild with arousal, the longer she looked at it, the more she realized what it was she had to do, it was the polar opposite of what Naruto currently was, thick, healthy, and everything Blake could ever need or want. Bringing her hand up to it, she let loose a soft groan filled with desire as the heat Naruto's cock was radiating hit her palm like a bonfire. Maybe it was because he was sick, maybe it was how it naturally was, Blake didn't care, because the moment her palm made contact with his dick, all other pretenses were put on hold, none were as important as the magnificent tree trunk laid out before her. Um, is this what you've been using to fuck all the girls I could smell on you? Blake asked with her eyes narrowed and her heart pounding licking her lips at the multitude of veins she could see crisscrossing all over his cock, pulsating with life and bringing even more hardness to his already intimidating size, she gulped down the saliva she could feel building up inside of her mouth, her hunger was so great, by this point it was a wonder she could even think coherently. Palming Naruto's dick at the base, Blake grinned lewdly at him when he groaned upon her slender fingers wrapping around what they could of his length, she looked back down and let out a quiet whine when she realized that she needed both of her hands to fully encompass his immense girth, then there were his balls, two golf ball sized spheres that promised any woman he unloaded their payload into a long and healthy pregnancy. This is going to destroy me, Blake thought with lustful trepidation as a heavy pulse of arousal went straight to her womb, before she even took her favorite professor's impressive member deep inside of her spasming womanhood, though, there was still something she had to do. Using the grip she had on his cock, Blake grinned and giggled sluttily as she tapped herself on the cheek with his burly tip, opening her mouth, she stuck out her tongue and did the same moaning deeply as her taste buds were covered in his salty pre, her eyes closed as she immersed herself in her task, flicking and twirling her tongue over his tip as she made sure she gave Naruto the most pleasure she could. The lewd flavor was frying the cat Fauna's brain, dulling her rationality, and sending her into even deeper levels of depravity, her ears were twitching with every moan and groan that Naruto released, 
the deep baritone of his voice sending shivers down her spine and causing goosebumps to form all across her skin. Gods, Naruto, your dick is so big, Blake moaned luridly, her cheeks were burning with how aroused she was, her fair skin now a deep crimson as she jerked off Naruto's cock with both of her hands. Backing up, Blake spat on his tip before spreading it all over his length, it made things easier for her hands, her movements quickening as she twisted them up and down his cock like she was milking him. Do you like that, professor? Blake whispered heatedly before kissing his tip and dragging her tongue down along the side of his length, Em, I just can't get enough of your cock, it's so tasty, she said and traced every vein that she could find while occasionally laying hot, wet kisses along his shaft, she was marking Naruto's cock with every touch of her lips, her reverence towards his shaft obvious in her actions. And we can't forget about these, Blake said lovingly, reaching down below and cupping his balls in her hands, playing with them for a little bit, she brought her head down and sucked one of them into her mouth, making a show of what she was doing by slurping loudly whilst Naruto released grunts of pleasure as his nuts were bathed in her saliva. Alternating back and forth, Blake made sure each of Naruto's balls were taken care of in their entirety. Only stopping when she was certain that every square inch of them were covered in the proof of her love, then, slowly licking her way back up to his cock's tip, she swirled her tongue around his head before engulfing the first few inches of his dick into her mouth, instantly, she was rewarded with a deep groan of approval from the blonde, the sound giving her great delight as she basked in the taste of his cock. The lewd flavor and the feel of his girthy shaft in her mouth were all she could think about as she slowly bobbed her head up and down on his cock, pursing her lips and sucking in her cheeks, she tried her best to take care of every portion of Naruto's cock that she could, even letting loose moans of her own as his tip hit the back of her throat with each drop of her head. So immersed in her task that she was, Blake didn't even notice the additional pair of amber eyes that were gazing at her in astonishment from outside the window to Naruto's room. Kali considered herself to be an exemplary member of the ever-changing society that existed in today's world, a great spokeswoman, and an amazing example of what it meant to be a strong woman despite the setbacks her race were given upon birth. But before all of those things, the thing Kali was most proud of, was being a mother. Not a day went by where she didn't smile at the thought that she and her husband were the parents to such a smart and beautiful daughter. That was why, after dropping off some medication for Blake to mitigate her upcoming heat with her teammates. She was a little sad to see that her daughter wasn't with them. Luckily, before she could leave, Yang, the blonde girl with quite sizable assets was quick to tell her that Blake had stayed behind with their teacher Ms. Goodwitch for some reason or the other, that, however, led her on another search after being told by the tall female professor that Shed sent Blake on an errand in her place because she was busy. Which led to where Callie was now, with her mouth wide open and her eyes showing clear surprise as she watched her daughter go to town on who she knew was Professor Naruto Uzumaki's dick. And what a dick it is, she thought with a small blush growing on her face, unconsciously reaching down to where her crotch was already heating up, wait no, what am I thinking? Callie shook her head to rid herself of those impure ideations, she was a good wife, and nothing good would come about from thinking of another man that way. That was why Callie was confused when, no matter how hard she tried, her gaze would not divert away from the obscene sight in front of her, was she actually enjoying the view of her daughter's debauchery? That was impossible. It was impossible, right? The quivering of her thighs and the butterflies in her stomach weren't because she liked what she was seeing, were they? Oh my! Callie gasped lightly her blush intensifying tenfold as she focused back on what was happening inside the Uzumaki's bedroom, somehow, during the time that Shed been lost in her thoughts, Blake had stopped sucking Naruto's cock and was now sitting with her thick ass cheeks smothering his face and her sopping wet pussy lips grinding against his lips. That wasn't even the craziest thing that Callie could see happening though, no, that award belonged to her daughter's stocking clad feet that were currently running up and down on either side of Naruto's spit-soaked cock, she was using her silk-clothed soles to jerk him off while he ate her out and Callie was both scandalized and aroused by the image. You like that, professor? Callie heard Blake moan, curling her toes around his tip while gyrating her hips on his face, Naruto was surprisingly active for a sick man, and his enthusiasm was apparently doing wonders for her daughter's enjoyment if the sounds she was making meant anything. I bet you do, she teased, jerking his cock with her feet once more, how do you think your students are going to react? How do you think Ruby is going to react to the fact that the professor she has a crush on, that the professor she looks up to, was eating her teammate out while she jerked his big, fat, cock, off with her feet? Naruto groaned at that, but because she was still sitting on his face, the vibrations permeating all throughout her womanhood caused Blake to feel pleasure as well. Um, I am so close, professor. She whined while gritting her teeth, speeding up the grinding of her cunt on his lips and the movement of her feet on his cock to bring them both to their releases. 
Eventually, though, it became too much for either of them to bear, and so in an explosion of moans and cries of pleasure, they both reached their climaxes in near perfect unison. Callie was panting lightly, her hand balled into a fist and resting on her rising and falling chest as she watched, enraptured, as Naruto's cock spewed rope after thick rope of cum into the air and onto her daughter's feet and legs, licking her lips, she watched through slitted eyelids as the erotic byplay went on for much longer than she thought was possible. Is it normal for a man to come so much in one orgasm? The mature woman thought dazedly, her heart was racing beneath her chest, lustful adrenaline flowing to every part of her body, she shivered anxiously, her narrowed eyes dilating more and more with each heavy spurt of viscous white liquid that shot out from Naruto's cock. If anyone saw Kali right then and there, there wasn't a chance in hell that she would be able to defend herself, at that moment, though, she didn't care, her focus was on the ongoings in front of her. Callie bit down on her lower lip wishfully as Blake shaked and shuddered on top of Naruto, coating his lips and tongue in her lewd essence as her pussy let loose a torrent of femcum into the eager blonde's open mouth. He isn't letting a drop escape, Callie thought with a feeling of jealousy filling her being, the older woman could almost feel his lips and tongue battering away at her pussy lips as her eyes rolled into the back of her head, not showing an ounce of mercy even as her orgasm tore through her soul. Callis' mouth was open and hot and steamy gasps of air were escaping them as she watched her daughter's mouth fall open while her eyes rolled back into her head, she nearly blew her cover as, while Blake's climax washed through her system, like a beast awakening from its thousand-year slumber, Naruto lifted the dazed girl up off of his face like she weighed no more than a feather before he tossed her onto the bed beside him. Oh, he's going to ruin her, Kali gasped and her thighs quivered as she witnessed her daughter being mounted by the muscular blonde, she was breathing heavily now unsure of what to do with what she was seeing, it was her duty to go in there and stop what was clearly about to happen from happening, but a small part of her that was quickly festering like a multiplying cancer cell was telling her to do the complete opposite and she found that she couldn't help but listen. Blake's eyes were wide with both lust and surprise after being so callously thrown off of Naruto's face, she wasn't expecting such strength from the sickly man, and she definitely wasn't expecting him to suddenly mount her like he did. PR Professor. What are you doing? Blake cried out when his cock, still as hard as it had been when she first laid eyes upon it, smacked down against her bare stomach. Obviously, sometime during the time Callie had been lost in her thoughts, Blake had stripped herself down until all that remained were her stockings, this got Naruto's blood pumping, and with it came the burst of energy he needed to do what he was about to do next. Don't act shy now, Blake, you know exactly what I am doing, Naruto's gravelly voice washed over her form, blanketing the blushing belladonna in his lustful aura. He's huge, Blake thought tepidly as she felt just how far up his cock was resting on her, she could feel his cock pulsing violently against her lower abdomen, his tip laying right above her belly button while drops of his hot and sticky precum fell onto her stomach, sending pleasant shivers all across her body from its warmth. Blake knew that she had been goading Naruto with her actions, but she never expected him to be able to do anything in the condition he was in, now, on her back with her glaring professor hovering over her body while his cock pressed into her stomach, she couldn't find it in herself to regret it, that, of course, didn't mean she couldn't feel any nervousness, especially when Naruto lifted his cock and slapped it against her stomach a couple times. Do you feel that? He asked, not waiting for her reply as he pulled his hips back, dragging his dick all the way down until his tip was right against her juicy folds, you caused that, now it's up to you to fix it. Wah wait, Naruto. Can't we talk about this first? Blake asked nervously when in reality she was anything but, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, please just fuck me already. She chanted in her mind, unable to voice her thoughts as they became jumbled, goosebumps covered her entire body as the anticipation built up inside of her once again, the coiling in her stomach becoming damn near unbearable as she awaited Naruto's next move. Thankfully, she didn't have to wait much longer as Naruto leaned over her once more, bringing his head right next to her ear he whispered one word to her, no, then all Blake saw was white. Coming to only a few seconds later, the cat faunus moaned like a professional whore as she felt her womanhood throb and squeeze around its large intruder. Naruto's cock was now deep inside of her, jumping and pulsating against Blake's walls while his tip pressed against the entrance to her womb. Fuck, Naruto groaned with his eyes closed, Blake was tight, and because of that he was content with just letting himself rest there for a moment while her cunt unconsciously milked him in her euphoria, she was coating his dick in her essence the mind-numbing climax that she was still going through causing her to spray her sexual juices all over his crotch and balls. Sitting back up, Naruto slowly pulled his hips back, extracting his throbbing length from Blake's depths in preparation for his next move. He moaned and paused momentarily, however, 
As Blake's cunt clamped down on his member like a vice, she was refusing to let him go, her walls pulsing around his retreating length in protest to his actions, soldiering on though, he continued until it was just the tip of his cock that remained inside of her. Then, without any warning besides his fingers digging into her sides, Naruto pounded into her sloppy cunt with an animalistic grunt. Nya! Blake cried out while her eyes rolled back into her head as Naruto's pelvis collided with her crotch, her boobs bounced and jiggled every time he thrust it into her, catching her professor's undivided attention, all while waves of boiling hot pleasure traversed throughout all of her luscious body sending her pussy into a spasming frenzy. The sounds of their mutual pleasure rang out inside of Naruto's bedroom, so loud and piercing that anyone close enough could hear what they were doing, luckily for them, only one person whose goal was anything but exposing them met that criteria. The heat Callie had been feeling before was nothing in comparison to what was now encompassing her entire body, the clothes she was wearing felt stifling, and it was only the fact that she was outside that kept her from stripping down completely, that worry didn't apply to her panties. Bunching up the bottom of her dress and peeling it down enough to free her tits, Callie pulled the small and thin lace garment down until they were at her mid-thigh, now with her dripping folds and erect nipples freed of their coverings, she shuddered euphorically as the cool air brushed against them, yet even with that small relief, the heat inside of her core still burned like a raging forest fire. Watching Naruto manhandle her daughter into submission was mind-blowing, her womanhood had already been dripping, rivulets of clear juices trailing down the insides of her thighs, but now after seeing the blonde mons complete dominance, it was more akin to waterfall. Oh gods, Callie moaned quietly, using one hand to cover her mouth while the other went down to her juicy mound, she wouldn't say it, not even to herself, but she wished she was in Blake's place at that moment. Just the thought of being covered by Naruto's muscular body sent jolts of fiery bliss straight to her pussy. Lightly brushing her fingers against her folds, Callus' head jerked down and she nearly bit down on her tongue, holding in the moan she felt trying to escape. All that ended up leaving her lips was a quiet whimper, her abs flexed and she hunched over, the simple act of touching herself being nearly too much for her after actively ignoring her own rapidly building arousal for so long. Hearing Blake's moans brought Callie back to the land of the living, but when she looked through the window, the sight that greeted her nearly sent her right back into the day's shed just left. Fuck, professor. You're fucking me so good, her daughter screamed, and for good reason too. Naruto was holding nothing back as he plowed straight into Blake's tight wet folds, he was like a well-oiled machine, pistoning his hips against her crotch with unrelenting ferocity that rocked the bed beneath them, her legs were resting on either one of his shoulders, his strong arms holding onto her thighs as he pushed and pulled her body into each of his thrusts, he was becoming a blur of movement the longer they fucked, his cock disappearing and reappearing into her womanhood repeatedly. MMPH, came Callus muffled whimper, after watching Naruto fuck Blake, the blushing milf couldn't hold herself back any longer, so using the cloth of her top as a gag to keep herself quiet, she slipped her pointer and middle fingers into her sopping wet hole and began fucking herself, instantly, her legs started shaking, her jaw clenched, and she nearly collapsed from the amount of pleasure that ran through her system. Oh, gods. Blake sobbed, crying fat tears of pleasure as her nerves were racked with constant bliss, she was digging her fingers into the bedsheets beside her, ripping into the sheets as she tried to keep herself as grounded as she could with the blonde's dick coring out her insides. Yes, Naruto. Fuck me. Blake's body jumped and jolted every time her professor's cock bottomed out inside of her, her head was rocking back and forth against the pillow beneath it, her mouth falling open and her teeth clattering together as his dick conquered her depths and kissed the entrance to her womb like a battering ram. Blake was nothing but a rag doll underneath Naruto's ferocious thrusts, her pussy being used simply as a means to pleasure his immense cock and empty his balls, but as much as the moaning cat Faunus realized that she was practically only a masturbatory toy for him to get off with, she also couldn't help just how much she loved that fact. Naruto grunted and groaned as he relentlessly buried himself into Blake's warmth, the room was heating up like an oven, droplets of sweat rolling down his already sweat-coated body as he slammed his hips into her crotch while his balls slapped off of her ass cheeks non-stop, he grunted, growling throatily before tensing his lower body as her cunt effortlessly swallowed his length. Oh gods, you're killing me! Blake screamed when Naruto's dick scraped against her G-spot, her slick walls had finally adjusted to his size, the deep piercing thrusts he had been giving her stretching her out and softening her love tunnel for his continued enjoyment but that didn't prepare her for the literal bomb that went off in her brain when his girthy length hit her pussy right on its most sensitive spot. At that moment, and for the second time that day, everything went blank for Blake, all of her thoughts and ideas. Gone. The only thing that remained was a blank white void in which Blake floated through aimlessly, that is, until everything came rushing back to her like a raging tsunami. That's it. 
Keep coming on that dick. Naruto's commanding voice was the first thing Blake heard upon opening her eyes, it rang out like a morning alarm in the dazed girl's head, only instead of annoyance, a blissful feeling of delight filled her entire being. Her mind felt light, and she could barely comprehend what was going on, all she could do was let out guttural moans and weakly hold onto Naruto's burly arms as she was fucked into his mattress like he was her king and she, his concubine, however, what she could comprehend was the insane amounts of pleasure currently shooting up her spine from the depths of her womanhood. She was writhing beneath Naruto's powerful form, clamping down on his monstrous cock and pushing her thick hips into his own as he pounded down into her from above. Soon enough, Naruto got tired of the monotony of their position, so lifting her up while never stopping his brutal pounding, he walked over to the wall nearest his window and slammed her back against it. Kali ducked beneath the window with her back against the wall when she saw Naruto approach her vantage point with Blake still skewered on his cock, she flinched, jerking away from the wall momentarily, when a loud thump passed through it but moaned in desire and a hint of jealousy when harsh vibrations that shook her to the core followed right after. A full body blush covered Kali's skin as she realized what was happening, Naruto was fucking Blake mercilessly against his bedroom wall, this close, and Kali could even hear it, the nasty wet sounds of their sexes colliding, the sweet moans of her progeny being drawn out along with every angry bull-like grunt of her well-endowed lover, she could hear everything going on like she was in the room with them. It was because of this that Kali never stopped fucking herself on her fingers, rolling her hips, the mature mother of one gritted her teeth as the grass beneath her feet was coated in her dripping arousal, oh how she wished it was her in Blake's place. Naruto was huffing like a wild animal as he used her daughter's pussy like a lubed up flashlight, his muscles were bulging from the constant, unrelenting exercise he was putting them through, and it showed on his face, sweat was dripping from his brow, his jaw was clenched and his eyes were narrowed in intense concentration. Get ready Blake. I am about to come. Kali shivered in delight as she heard Naruto growl out his warning her core spasming and her eyes rolling into the back of her head as the pleasure she felt rapidly built up. Oh Fuik, Naruto. Me too. Blake screamed, dipping her head into the crook of the blonde's neck and hiding her teary-eyed face in his shoulder. Callie was knuckles deep inside of her snatch by then, so with her palm pressing against her mound, she curled her fingers against the roof of her cunt and rapidly fucked herself while imagining the strained looks both Blake and Naruto had as they approached their peaks. She was biting down on her lower lip, muffling her cries and moans and clenching her eyes tight as she rubbed her pleasure bundle over and over again, the sensations were slowly becoming too much for her to handle, but with the sounds of her daughter and her professor's furious sex ringing in her ears, she couldn't stop herself even if she wanted to. Goosebumps covered Kala's skin, her breathing picked up and her pussy lips clamped down tight around her fingers as a beastly roar emanated from Naruto's room, rising up to take a quick peek through the window, she nearly drew blood from how hard she was biting down on her lip at the image she was greeted with. Because Naruto, having turned Blake around so she was pressed up against said window, was growling like an animal as he fucked her from behind, she was bracing herself with her hands against the windowsill, but not even that was enough as her face and tits were squashed against the glass, her hardened nipples dragging against the smooth surface as her body bounced from the pounding her blonde lover was giving her while the glass fogged up from her endless gasps. MMGRHH. Here it comes, Blake. Naruto growled out through his gritted teeth, his groans mixing in with the amber-eyed girl's loud moans of pleasure as his balls rose and his cock throbbed inside of her, he was on the cusp of his release, and if the desperate way her cunt was spasming and gripping onto his shaft meant anything, she was as well. Moments later and Naruto could no longer hold back his rapidly rising climax, wrapping his arms around Blake's front and pulling her back against him with his hands sinking into her soft tits, he buried his face in her neck at the same time he buried his cock to the hilt inside of her greedy cunt and let loose everything he had built up. Kali watched and listened as Naruto grunted and groaned with each heavy jet of cum he shot inside of Blake, his hips were pressed right against Blake's, so there were no delusions that he was coming anywhere but directly into her daughter's womb, she was enraptured by the way his hulking frame surrounded Blake's lithe body, his strong arms were locking her in place, and it was plain to see that he was not letting her go anywhere until he was done filling her up. Blake meanwhile, was moaning like a slut. The feeling of Naruto's hot cum blasting its way into her vulnerable depths sent her already tingling pussy into a free fall of never ending. Rapturous pleasure, she could barely see, think, or breathe properly at all as her womb was stuffed full of Naruto's boiling hot seed, her mind was floating, and with his hold on her, the only things she could move were her legs, legs that had risen up behind them and pushed against Naruto's muscular ass cheeks to get him to go even deeper inside of her, as though he weren't already deep enough as is. Kali watched this all through her narrowed eyes, and as the two lovers came undone, the arousal that had been pooling in her core, 
building up in intensity with every sinful maneuver of her digits, exploded like fireworks so intense that it left her seeing stars and gasping for air as her orgasm ripped through her body right alongside them. Every deep grunt and shaky moan that Naruto and Blake released sent electricity up Kala's spine, she could barely keep herself standing, her legs were shaking so much. She was panting in exhaustion by the time the last few thrums of her climax passed through her, her cunt was still tingling, eager for more, but with her back against the wall and her arms on either side of her body, her first priority was to try to bring her rapid heart rate under control. But that's when it hit her, her daughter was getting fucked, and not just fucked, but bred like some insignificant whore, and here she, her mother, was getting off to that. She called herself a good mom only hours earlier, but could she still say the same after what she'd just done? That, Callie didn't have the answer for, what she did know was that she was going to have to fix this, and fast. But first she needed just a second or two to gather the strength back to her legs. Naruto groaned as he pulled his dick out from his near catatonic student's greedy pussy, his balls were empty, and his cock was satisfied, but with the way she was still gripping onto him even in her blissed out state, all of that could change at any second. Milking and squeezing down on his length, Blake was ensuring that not a single drop of his seed remained inside of his dick, she was sucking him dry, and with every toe curling spasm that Naruto felt around his shaft, he fought against the burning urge in his body that told him to slam back into her and continue their romp for the next who knows how many hours. Night was approaching and he was sure that Blake, as promiscuous as had discovered she was, wasn't going to enjoy missing class because he was keeping her busy, besides, with the adrenaline fading and the lust slowly leaving his body he was feeling quite tired already, no surprise there though really seeing how he was still sick. So after the excruciatingly slow process of pulling his still sensitive cock free from Blake's walls, Naruto held onto her and brought them both back to lay down on the bed and recover. Thirty minutes later and after Shed regained enough energy to walk, Naruto watched as Blake stumbled her way out of his room before he collapsed back into his bed for some much needed rest. At the same time outside, but now hidden away in front of Naruto's house, was Kali, she was as silent as the night as she kept out of sight of her spaced out daughter, just simply watching her retreat back to her dorm where she was more than likely going to pass out for the next eight to ten hours, when she was sure she wasn't coming back, Callie made her move. Checking the door, she found that Blake had left it unlocked, so twisting the handle further, she opened the door and slowly made her way inside, Callie made sure not to make any noise closing it, but when she went to lock it the mechanism clicked loudly in the otherwise quiet house. Oh shit. The surprisingly loud and echoing sound caused Callie to freeze in fright. Her cat ears were twitching, actively listening for any signs that the owner of the house was alerted to her infiltration, but when nothing happened after standing perfectly still for nearly a minute, her rigid posture relaxed and she let out the breath she had been holding in that entire time, then, after cursing herself out in her mind for another minute for not thinking about that possibility, she continued her silent quest to Naruto's room. Luckily for her, his door was still open, this gave Kali the perfect opportunity to do as Shed planned and tear the unprepared blonde a new one his lewd behavior would not go unpunished if she had anything to say about it. But even with all the mental preparation that Shed gone through, even with the clear goal in mind to make sure she went in there and scolded him for his actions, the minute the belladonna milf entered the napping professor's room, everything left her. Why? Because at that exact moment, all of her senses were attacked in one big three-pronged assault. Her nostrils were invaded with the scent of pure, unadulterated, sex, the thick, musky scent was encompassing every square inch of the room leaving nothing untouched by its lurid grasp and unfortunately for her, added to its reach now, was herself. Then there was the large tent Callie could see he was still pitching. Even after all of that he's still hard. She thought, astonished while slowly making her way closer to his bedside, she should nt be surprised though, what with just how long and hard had gone at it with her daughter. That was when she remembered what her goal was for coming here, and with the growing haze momentarily clearing from her brain, she rebuilt her stern countenance that had crumbled so easily and prepared to wake the sleeping man up to let him know what was up, before she could even reach out to do so, however, his next move undid everything. Callous mouth fell open and her pupils shrunk to pinpricks as Naruto shifted in his sleep, apparently the sheets covering him had grown uncomfortable because he tossed them off of himself with a frown on his face, the minute he did so, a content smile formed on his face, but none of that was what Blake's mother's focus was on, no that belonged to what Naruto pushing the covers off of himself revealed. She had seen it before through the window, but up close now that it was uncovered, the blonde's erect pillar was almost unreal to look at, it was perfection in every sense of the word, with amazing girth and tremendous length, Kali knew that any who experienced the pleasure it could give would be hooked for life. She understood how Blake had fallen so quickly before her stud of a professor, 
because had she less control, Callie believed she would have been drooling at the sight of Naruto's exposed cock, of course, because of how much of a dignified woman she was, that was not the case, even so, that didn't mean she didn't have any reaction, though she did make sure to keep it tame. Naruto groaned as he was brought to the world of consciousness by an ever familiar feeling and sound coming from his crotch area, opening his eyes, he expected to see Blake back for more, but imagine his surprise when instead of his student, he was greeted to the sight of her mother, Callie who he knew was married with her eyes closed and her lips wrapped around the tip of his dick as she slurped on his dick like it was an object of worship. The woman in question wasn't even thinking of her husband. Her focus was on taking care of whatever parts of his cock her mouth couldn't reach with her hands. She was twisting them up and down on his shaft much like her daughter had only a few hours ago, applying different levels of pressure, Callie inwardly smirked as Naruto groaned, it was like she was trying to show him that it wasn't just Blake that could take care of his needs, now they could both be his sluts, mother and daughter both kneeling before the strong blonde and ensuring no amount of pleasure was out of his reach. A fervent gasp escaped the mature woman's mouth as she was suddenly pulled off of Naruto's cock, it was apparent that he wasn't going to be as merciful as he was with her teasing daughter, instead instantly ambushing Kali like a lion to a gazelle. In the next second, she found herself face down with her ass up on the bed where he once laid, her face was buried in his pillow, filling her nostrils with his musky scent and amplifying the arousal she was already feeling, she sunk into the warmth he left behind, almost forgetting where she was if not for his strong smack to her ass cheeks that was sure to leave a mark. Oh fuck, Naruto. Wait. We can't do this, Kali cried out, looking back at him before moaning with her eyes rolling back as he gripped and massaged her stinging cheeks like he was kneading dough, she collapsed back onto the pillow, doing nothing more than moaning and jerking as his fingers dug into her soft and pillowy behind. Naruto could see where Blake got her perfectly round butt from, her bella booty if he remembered his male students' whispers correctly. A mixture of pain and pleasure racked the MILF system as he spanked her ass again and again, adding even more red to her already hand-printed rear, it was like he was marking her, ensuring she never forgot who she truly belonged to, and all without even penetrating her. As though he could read her mind, a heavy cylindrical object slapped against callous round cheeks at that exact moment, she could instantly tell what it was, its temperature and shape already ingrained into her mind from the small amount of time she was allowed to play with it. Shaking her thick booty, Kali squealed in surprise as Naruto grabbed the back of her head and forced her into the pillow, his dick was wedged between her cheeks, but that soon changed as he dragged it down till his tip pressed right against her warm entrance. Then, while holding her down and keeping his fingers digging into her plush behind, he plunged forward, driving every inch of his hardcock into Blake's mom's welcoming depths. A loud but muffled moan reached Naruto's ears as his hips came to rest against Kalis ass, her pussy was fluttering around his length, drawing him in and clenching down around his cock at random intervals. Kali felt like shed died and gone to heaven, bliss overtook her senses and drool stained the pillowcase her face was pressed against as her walls stretched and adapted to Naruto's incredible girth, the moment his cock breached through her folds, she was put into a rapturous daze. Who knew I'd be balls deep in both mother and daughter one after the other? It's gotta be in your genes to seek out my cock, huh? Naruto said with a smirk on his face while barely moving in and out of her velvety tunnel, he was still a little bit feverish, but it was like draining his balls in Blake's pussy was just the thing he needed to get rid of some of his fatigue, now with his dick lodged inside of her mother, he was feeling on top of the world. Hearing her muffled whimpers and cries of pleasure, along with feeling the way her cunt spasmed around his length, Naruto's muscles tensed as goosebumps covered his entire body. Were you watching me this entire time? he growled out, pulling his hips back before mercilessly thrusting into her quivering womanhood, did you enjoy seeing your daughter get plowed like the slut she is? Is that what you want me to do to you? Naruto grunted, threading his fingers through her hair before gripping and pulling her head up from the pillow. No ooh, please. Kali groaned pathetically as tears rolled down her cheeks, she wanted to defend Blake as a mother should, but she couldn't help the jolt of lustful anticipation that shot through her body at the thought of being fucked into Naruto's bed like the mewling bitch shed seen her daughter become. No? Naruto asked her mockingly, so you don't want this? He yelled, holding her in place as he began drilling into her eager folds even faster. You, UGHH. Oh, Fook. Was all the mature woman could scream as her guts were rearranged by Naruto's cock, his deep thrusts were piercing into her soul, scrambling her brains and destroying any hope of her seeking out pleasure from anyone but him. Yeah. Naruto hissed as her cunt clamped down around him, bathing his dick in her sexual juices. What was that you were saying earlier? Um, don't stop. Fuick me, Callie moaned delightedly. Gritting her teeth and clenching her jaw as Naruto's cock ground against her insides, 
She was doing her best to throw her ass back against each of his heavy thrusts, but with the way he was holding her down, keeping her still with his hold on her hair and his hand on her hips, the most she could do was stay there and take it, panting and crying out as his hips clapped off of her jiggling cheeks and filled the room with nothing but the lewd sounds of their sex. That's what I thought. But I wonder what Blake would say if she found out her mother was such a whore. Naruto's words sent a jolt of arousal through Kala's body before he yanked her even further backwards, her head was facing the roof and her back was now arched to the point one would think she would solely feel pain but in reality, the slutty mother of the girl he fucked previously the ought she was in heaven with how good she was feeling. Nua. Am not a war. Kali weakly defended herself, grunting like an animal as her pussy was conquered, in that position Naruto's thrusts felt like earthquakes to her, shaking the very foundations of her consciousness. Oh yeah? Naruto leaned forward and turned her head so he could look her in her hazy eyes, look at you, if this isn't what a whore looks like then I don't know what does. Um, was the only sound Kali could make, the constant onslaught of extreme pleasure was too much for her to properly process any of his words, ecstasy was the only thing she could think of at the moment, her entire mind and body stuck in a cycle of never-ending rapture as the blonde fucked her incredibly. Her eyes rolled into the back of her head as Naruto treated her like she was nothing more than his personal bitch, her cat ears were twitching and quivering with each violent collision of their sexes, her womb was shuddering underneath the blonde's relentless barrage, his burly tip constantly knocking against her poor and defenseless cervix like a battering ram. Letting go of Kala's hair, Naruto let her head drop back onto the pillow and focused all of his efforts into fucking her as hard as he could, he could feel his balls rising with a new load of his life giving essence and he knew just where he was going to dump it. Fuck, Kali. Naruto cursed, setting a brutal tempo as her slick walls brought him closer and closer to his peak, the veins in his arms were bulging, his fingers sinking into her hips with a bruising grip that only gave pleasure to the newly awakened masochist. Kali's body was shaking, her cheek was on the pillow and drool was leaving her lips parted as she took his rough pounding like a slut, she could feel the blonde's cock pulsing and expanding inside of her and it was obvious why it was doing so, the image of him pressing his hips against Blake's and ensuring not a single drop of his thick and sticky load spilled was seared into her brain, she would never forget the magnificent sight of her daughter being seated by Naruto, never. And now as Naruto's hips slapped against her ass and his dick split her womanhood in two, Kali realized she would be sharing that same fate. Naruto grunted, his muscles tightening and his cock throbbing as he finally reached his climax, holding Kala's hips close, he groaned and shuddered as he emptied his balls into her waiting womb, her cunt was milking him dry, squeezing down on his cock and capturing every hot spurt of his sticky essence that spewed out from his tip. The mature milf moaned as her walls were painted white, the heat his seed exuded was spreading deep inside of her, warming her already steaming core and sending her mind and body back into the blissful days it had only just escaped. Unfortunately for her, she wouldn't have the luxury of sinking into that relaxed state for very long as the moment Naruto finished depositing his semen in her womb, he was at it once again. Kali yelped and her half-lidded eyes widened in surprise as the blonde flipped her onto her back before mounting her with obvious intent, before she could even say anything, her eyes rolled back into her head and a loud moan left her lips as her cunt was stretched around Naruto's girthy shaft once again. The sounds of their furious copulation were the only things emanating from Naruto's room from that moment on and it continued to remain that way well until morning, in the end, it was only because Kali could no longer take the abuse he was giving that the two of them even stopped. A day later, Naruto was back to his normal daily activities, no longer was he constrained to only his bed while feeling barely alive, if anything, after his day with Blake and Kali, he was feeling more energetic than ever, which, after thinking about them, reminded him that his silent amber-eyed student hadn't been in class that day. I hope she didn't catch what I had, he thought before turning to his classroom's door just as it slammed open. Professor Naruto. You gotta help me. A frantic Ruby Rose yelled and ran up to his desk upon seeing him. Without even allowing him to speak, she was quick to tell him of how both Blake and the cat Faunus mother's condition had randomly turned south overnight. The two were being kept in Team RWBYS dorm at the moment but with how things were going, she knew she had to get some help and that led her to his classroom. Both of them are there. Naruto looked down at the frantic team leader with a serious visage. Yeah. It's so crazy. They both got sick at like the exact same time. Ruby yelled, throwing her hands in the air at the situation before her expression turned confused, but the strangest thing though, is when I asked them what happened. Why? What did they say? Naruto asked whilst expertly hiding his amusement at the predicament he had caused. That's just the thing. She paused contemplatively, they didn't say anything. All they did was blush and pretend they didn't hear me which was very rude by the way, she pouted indignantly. How strange indeed, Naruto said, 
making sure he sounded just as lost at what the cause could be, but don't worry, it'll take care of whatever it is that's bothering them, just make sure no one enters your team dorm for the next day or two, alright. They could have spread their germs in there and I don't want you girls catching it. Okay, but where will we stay? Ruby had to ask, she yelped and just barely caught the object Naruto had thrown at her when he started to speak again. I know it's pointless to say this, but just enjoy yourselves while you're there. There's a game system and all the goodies in my fridge are yours to enjoy. It'll take good care of both Blake and her mother and they'll be right as rain by the time the weekend ends, so just like I said earlier, don't worry. Naruto finished his impromptu consolation by lightly mussing up her hair and chuckling when she swatted his hand away with a blush, with that said, he made his way out of his class and made his way to Team RWBY's dorm with a smirk on his face, leaving the embarrassed girl by herself with nothing but her thoughts. Ruby smiled with the blush still painting her cheeks as she thought over Naruto's reassuring words, looking down at the keys he had given her, she knew she could trust him and that what he said was true so all of her worries were forgotten, besides, free access to her favorite teacher's home for an entire weekend. When would a chance like this come again? So shooting off a text to Yang and Weiss about the situation, she sped down the halls in a flurry of rose petals to her newest goal, thanks for watching.